There's a lot of blue in the stands here, Scott, but let me tell you something they don't know. This ball doesn't dribble. Let's get it on. <laughs> All right, Chuck, thanks. He is from Youngstown, Ohio. He can be dangerous. He returned a punt, 67 yards for a score, and there come from behind win over Missouri last week. We'll see how he does if he gets an opportunity here on kickoffs. But as you know, one of the best uh, touchback men in the kicking business is uh, booting it for Georgia. He hasn't given the opposition too many opportunities to return kicks. Blankenship is ready. Bowden is ready for Kentucky. It's the dogs and cats together in one place. And we are underway. A low spinning line drive kick will sail deep over the back line of the end zone. The game starts with a touchback, and Kentucky will have the ball first and 10 on the 25-yard line. Today's first half broadcast presented by Ambetter. Better is taking charge of my health. And by Southwest Airlines, low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. I'm not sure, but I think Hot Rod, after he just punched that ball through the end zone, told the crowd to be quiet. If he did, <laughs> I love him even more. They want to make some noise today, and we shall see. Here's Terry Wilson, the quarterback, going to take it out of the shotgun. Play fake. Roll to his right a little bit. Throw it. And find his target around the 36-yard line on the near sideline. That's Isaiah Epps, 6'2 sophomores. The pass is complete to the 36-yard line, a gain of 11, and a first down on the first play for Kentucky. Dogs went single safety, dropped an additional guy in the box. Nice play there by Kentucky. Getting out on the edge, just a deep comeback on top of, or right in front of Tyson Campbell. Four down linemen for the Cats. They give it to Benny Snell. He veers to the right at right tackle and will run it to a pile and a gain of a couple to the 38 before he's uh, stacked up and stopped by Julian Rochester and Monty Rice, the linebacker for the Dogs. So a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight for the Cats. Ball just across their own 38-yard line. Tate Crowder spied on that initial play there by Kentucky. Probably something that you're going to see quite a bit of from the dogs today. Here's the snap to the quarterback, and he'll fire it out to the left. It's caught by Bowden. He runs over the backside of his blocker, falls to the ground, but put his hand on the turf to keep him upright, keep his balance, and then he's covered up after that. But uh, the forward progress is going to put him up at the 40, a gain of two. Rice and Richard LeCount on the hit for the Dogs' defense to push him back. Quick bubble screen there by Kentucky. Third and five and a half or so, third and six. The Cats will go nowhere with Benny Snell. He's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Tried to break it off at right tackle. And Jonathan Ledbetter just shut it down right there on the 40. No gain on the play quickly. The Cats are going three and out. It's fourth down and six. And they'll send the punt unit onto the field. Great first series by the Dogs defensively. Single safety up in press coverage. Going to shut down the running game. Take away the quick passing game from Kentucky. Kentucky, if they're going to beat this defense, and how we're playing. They're going to have to throw the ball down the field vertically. We don't think they can do it. Max Duffy, the 25-year-old Australian punter, will kick it to Miko Hartman, the SEC's punt return average leader. Going to back up Miko to the 12. Misses two men, breaks outside to the 20, outside the numbers to the 30. Got a block there to the 40. At the sideline, cuts in at the 50, to the 40. He's got space. Does he have the speed? They'll grab him by the legs at the 25-yard line. A tremendous return. Miko Hardman took it from about the 14 all the way down to the Cats' 24-yard line. Tackled by C.J. Conrad, a tight end on special teams or otherwise. Hardman would have taken it to the Kentucky house. 48-yard punt, 6 64-yard return, Z. A couple of great blocks there and a couple of great no blocks. His dogs held up. It was it would have been close to a block in the back, but the speed of Miko Harmon split about three guys in blue shirts and then was just off to the races. Well, we said he was the number one punt return man in the SEC. We just saw why right there. Dogs start this possession in Cats territory at their 23-yard line. The dogs moving to our left. Fromm shifting Holyfield to his left. He'll hand it off to Elijah Holyfield. Tries to break out. Cuts inside at the number. 15, 10, 9, 8, and tripped up there. Boy, close to taking that one to the house, too. Unbelievable patience by Holyfield. Cats went cover zero, and everybody up in the box. And it looked like that run was going nowhere. But the patience of Holyfield to wait and to wait until he finally found a seam and then got to the second level and nobody was there. Edwards made the tackle. Mike Edwards, the nickel back. It was a 
15-yard gain. It's goal to go for the Dogs on the Cats' 8-yard line. From under center, Nauta moves in motion to the right. Stops at a wing. Just outside right tackle. Handoff Holyfield. Jumps through the hole. They'll twist him down around the 7-yard line. They only got a yard there. A lot of blue shirts or gray shirts, actually, and blue pants converged on Holyfield for a one-yard pickup. It'll be second goal from the seven. The Dogs work in the Massey-Ferguson red zone here on their first series of the game. Experience the compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong. Second and goal, Dogs from the Cat 7. We're in the first few minutes of the first quarter. 11.36 on the clock. Clock moving here in Lexington. From under center, Holyfield, the deep back. Handoff. Elijah Holyfield runs through a hole at left tackle. Inside the five, falling down to the four or so. Quentin Bohanna, the nose guard, big 6'4", 340 pounder from Cordova, Tennessee, makes the tackle. A lot of bodies on that left side down to the four. The gain was three. It's goal to go from the Cats' four-yard line. Dogs keeping it spread out as well. Three receivers on the field right now. The Wildcats, a lot of man-to-man, -man, not even playing zone down here. See if we run a little pick play very quickly to get the ball in space and hopefully into the end zone. Trey Hill has come into the game at center for the Dogs. Gilliard is out. They've got uh, Fromm in the shotgun, Swift in the backfield. Three receivers right. Fromm on the near hash, looking, throws it into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, tight end! Isaac Nauta picking up where he left off last week on a crossing route from right to left. Just about a yard deep in the goal line. Fromm put it up high around his face, and he reached his hands in, grabbed hold of that ball, and put six on the board for the Dogs. Another third down touchdown pass from Jake Fromm, and a good read. Cats finally got out of cover, too. They went a little combo zone look. You've got to go to the tight end against that look and it's a mismatch with how big Nauta is and Jake Fromm put that football in the only spot he could put it and Nauta makes the catch. Way to strike early, dogs. First score of the game, a touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Rodrigo Blankenship puts the extra point up and through. It's good, and it's 7-0 Georgia with 10.37 to go first quarter. Dogs strike first on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Seven to nothing, dogs. Georgia goes 23 yards in four plays. 204 off the clock. A four-yard touchdown pass from Tanada. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. As uh, Blankenship will kick it away here, we'll watch from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here at Commonwealth Stadium. Blankenship's kick going to land in about the same spot the first one did over the back line of the end zone for the touchback. Our first half broadcast presented by M Better. Better is taking charge charge of my health. Let's go down to the Cook's Pest Control sidelines. That's where Chuck Dowdle is. Chuck. Guys, uh, obviously good news with a touchdown, but just before that, as you mentioned, Lamont Gilliard appeared to be hurt. He uh, came off the field rapidly, but a left leg injury. He collapsed as soon as he got to the sideline. They helped him under the tent. The doctors went in with him, and then, of course, I saw Coach Smart go in. Now, that could have very well been just to check to find out, hey, what's my center situation? But as soon as I get an update on how serious serious the injury is, I'll get back to you. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. Wilson, the quarterback, in the shotgun, going to give it to Snell. Snell bounces out to the right, outside of the numbers, and into the Kentucky sideline, pushed out of bounds by Tyson Campbell, a freshman secondary man. Dogs with another player slow to get up. That's DeAndre Walker, still sitting on the turf. The gain was about five and a half. Just across the 30-yard line. Well, let's call it six. They spot the ball on the 31. So Snell with a six-yard gain. And Georgia with another player shaken up. Gilliard, as you heard Chuck reporting, uh, in the medical tent. They're taking a look at him. He went out on that last uh, play on the scoring play for Georgia. As Trey Hill came in to play center. Now Walker is shaken up. 
And there's going to be an injury timeout here in Lexington. Georgia 7, Kentucky nothing. Breaking the action back in a moment on the Bulldogs Sports Network. And today's first half broadcast presented by Ambetter. Better is taking charge of my health. DeAndre Walker was able to walk off under his own power. We'll get a report on him as soon as we can. It's second down and four for the Cats from their own 31-yard line. Play fake to Snell, and uh, they'll throw it out to Bowden on this near side. Bowden kind of jab-stepping left and right up to the 35-yard line, close to the first down. Tyler Clark, Monty Rice, Tate Crowder on the stop for the Georgia defense. A little bit shy of the first down, so it's going to be third and less than a yard to go for the Cats. The point of the ball not quite touching the 35, and that's where the Wildcats need to go to get the first down. Tyson Campbell's about eight yards off there, just a one-step hitch by Kentucky to get to the outside. Wilson back in the shotgun. They work out of the pistol. Hand off to Snell. Bounces out to the right. Grant hits him as he comes across the line of scrimmage. But Snell across the 40 to the 41-yard line. He got six more. Walter Grant, the sophomore linebacker from Cairo, Georgia, hit him first. And then Richard LeCount second. And J.R. Reed also a piece of the tackle there and a piece of the stop. Kentucky now steadily moving after going three and out on their first series. They're up to their own 41, a first down there. Wilson gives it to Snell. He's got blocking, bouncing out to the right side on the sideline and chased in the Kentucky sideline by Richard LeCount as he crosses midfield to the Georgia 49-yard line. And that's three runs in a row now to the Kentucky right side of the offensive line. And they've, co uh, they've collapsed our containment every time. Snell having zero issue getting to the outside and finding plenty of space. That was an 11-yard gain for Benny Snell. It's a first down at the Georgia 48 for the Wildcats who are moving right. They'll stay in the pistol. Two receivers left, two to the right. Now Snell shifts to the right. Play fake. Wilson will throw. He's got uh, Bouvier, David Bouvier, senior 5'9 receiver, tiptoeing, making the catch and tiptoeing out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A pickup of five as the Cats go quickly. They go no huddle. We'll check in with Chuck in just a moment. He's got some information from the sidelines. And right now, coverage just too soft on the outside by the Dogs. Kentucky, if they're going to throw the football, they want to go quick game. Dogs need to get in the face of these receivers, press and take that quick passing game away. Cats on the Dogs, 43. Wilson laterals it back to Bowden. They wanted to do a double pass. Bowden pulls it down, now starts to run. He's holding the ball in one hand. He tries to weave through Georgia defenders. Not a lot of space there. Lucky didn't get knocked. Uh, the ball didn't get knocked out of his hands. They tackle him at the 43-yard line. Tyreek McGee and Jonathan Ledbetter leading Georgia's defense. And it's going to be third down and about five for the Cats. That play didn't do a whole lot. No, it didn't. A great recognition there by Richard LeCount. Not fooled for one minute forcing that would-be pass into a run and dogs swarming everywhere there. We've taken uh, DeAndre Walker to the locker room. I saw him over the back line of the end zone to our left. We'll check in with Chuck in just a moment. Bowden goes in motion, now comes back to the near side. Shotgun snap to Wilson on the far hash, chased out of the pocket. Curls and rolls to the left, and we will get him with Cox. Brenton Cox pursued him and chased him down from behind. Back on the other side of the midfield stripe at the Cats 49. Cox and Monty Rice with a sack on the Kentucky quarterback and Kentucky will be forced to punt here on fourth down. Let's go down to the sidelines quickly to Chuck and a Cook's Pest Control report. Chuck? Jump Walker's left ankle and then they took him to the um, took him to the locker room and uh, hang on a second I may have an update. Hold on just a second. Okay. Gilliard, I'm being told, is just out for now. They've got him on the bike. Maybe we'll get him back. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. Duffy, the uh, rugby-style kick to the right. We'll have it bounce on the turf around the 20. It checks up around the 13 or 14-yard line, and the Dogs will get the ball back right there. After that eight-yard loss on the sack, they kick it away to the Dogs. Georgia will start at the 13. It was a 38-yard punt. 7 to nothing. Georgia leading Kentucky first quarter on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network.
We're in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here in Lexington. First half broadcast presented by M. Better taking charge of my health. Georgia first and 10 at its own 13 yard line. From under center, Swift in the backfield. DeAndre gets the carry, runs to the right, following blocking across the 15, approaching the numbers on the far side of the field, and then knocked to the turf at the 17 yard line. He got four running to that right side behind Wilson and Mays on that right side of the line of scrimmage. Dogs are without the center. Lamont Gilliard, Trey Hill is in its center now. And then on the next series for defense, we lost DeAndre Walker. So we'll be following the progress of those two guys. Hopefully they can come back into the ballgame. Pretty clear what the dogs want to do early. Pound the rock. See if you can wear down this Kentucky defensive front that's been so good this year. Two tight ends set for the dogs. Hand off to Swift. Bounces out right. Cuts through a gap. Spins at the 20. Falls forward to the 22-yard line as he was tackled by uh, Derek Beatty, one of the secondary men for Kentucky. Ball just across the 21. They move it back a little bit. The gain was almost a full five. It's third and a yard for the dogs from our own 21 and a half. This Kentucky defense has been, has been stout against the run all year long, just giving up 107 yards per game. Not phasing the dogs right now. Only one pass so far in the first couple of series. Four receivers, two to each side for the dogs. We're going to give it to Swift. Swift angles to the right. I think he's short of the first down. They stopped him around the 22, just beyond the line of scrimmage. And it will be fourth down. We didn't get it. Calvin Taylor, Jr., defensive end from Augusta, Georgia, made the stop for the Kentucky defense. Ball just shy of the 22. There was no gain on the play, and it will be forced to kick with Jake Camarda, the freshman from Norcross. He stands on his own seven, takes the snap, will kick it away to David Bouvier, who's asking for a fair catch, backing up, backing up, retreating back inside the 25-yard line. Nice long kick by Camarda, and the fair catch made at the Cats' 23-yard line. 55 yards punt. All uh, Drive to Win Hunger Test Drive event is November 13th through the 17th. Your test drive will generate 200 meals for Feeding America and receive $1,000 towards a new BMW. Visit BMWATL.com for details. 4.58 on the clock, first quarter. Kentucky started the ball game on offense. They went uh, three and out, and then Miko Hardman Slapped him in the face with a 64-yard punt return, putting the ball on the Cats' 23-yard line. And the Dogs scored in four plays after that on a four-yard throw from Fromm Donata. And that's all the scoring thus far. 7 to nothing. Georgia leads. Kentucky will come out of the timeout. Start play from their own 23. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Terry Wilson, the quarterback, transfer from Oregon and junior college, will hand it off to Snell. He hesitates, runs through the hole, and he's got running room across the 30 up to the 31-yard line, and that's a gain of eight for Snell. He's a very patient runner, Z. He waited for that hole to develop, and DeAndre Baker made the tackle on the other side, but Smell is, or Snell is one of the best at uh, sniffing out those holes and waiting for it to open. Yeah, just an inside trap play there. Snell waiting on his blocker to get in that hole and lead the way for him. Great patience there. And just way too soft, way too much there on first down if you're a Dogs fan. Second down for the Cats on their 31. Give it to Snell again. This time we grab him from behind by Robert Beal Jr., the linebacker, went right down the line of scrimmage. Tackled Snell from behind on the left edge. Let's see uh, what kind of yardage they give him. He got a yard to the 32-yard line. So it is now third and one for Kentucky from their own 32. They work on the far hash, moving to the right, and they trail 7 to nothing with less than four minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, not even a hand on Bill, able to get to the backfield immediately on that one. Dogs' defensive line shifts. We have four or five men piled up in there. They give it to Snell. He crowds his way up to the 33-yard line. And it's going to be close. I think he got it, though. Depending on the spot, it looks like he got the first down. He only got a yard on the carry. Boy, and pretty favorable spot right there for Snell. Trying to look at it on the replay. but Well, they have brought it back a little bit, Z. They brought the ball back a little bit. Initially, yeah, they were past the 33. But uh, now the ball is just to the left of the far hash mark. And Hubert Owens, the referee, is calling for a measurement. 
So they'll bring the chains a few yards from that far sideline where Georgia resides this afternoon. Robert Beal made the stop again on Snell. And we'll see if he got enough for the first down. It's going to be close as they'll stretch the chains out here. Back judge down on one knee with his hand on the ball to keep it stationary. The umpire stretching out the yard marker, and he got the first down by half the distance of the ball. So the Cats with a first down on their 33. Buckle up because Sirius XM is zeroed everything in 150 channels. Commercial free music, entertainment, comedy news, and of course coverage of every major sport, including Georgia Bulldogs football. So tune in to Sirius XM. And wholesale changes there for the Dogs. Fresh legs coming into this football game. First and 10, Cats on the 33. They'll run a jet sweep to the near side. Cats running still upright. We can't get him on the ground. That's Zaire Hughes, a sophomore receiver from Paducah, Kentucky. Came from the left side, ended up being chased out of bounds, finally knocked out by Monty Rice on the right side of the field at the 47-yard line. That's a 14-yard pickup and a first down for the Cats. Yeah, dog stretch that out pretty well. Just nothing in pursuit coming as Hughes turned that up. Had all kinds of green grass and then a couple of missed tackles where we're not able to get him on the ground. Led to four or five more yards. First and 10 at their own 47. Shotgun snap to Wilson out of the pistol. Hand it to Snell. Snell crowds his way straight ahead. And not a lot of space there. Devontae Wyatt, sophomore lineman from Decatur. Walter Grant on the stop for the Georgia defense. We've got uh, Davis in there, and Grant will leave now. So will Wyatt as we substitute Rochester and Davis are among our linemen. Malik Herring is going to come back in now. And Patrick and Rice... Brenton Cox in there for the Georgia defense among the uh, front six right now. Cats with a second down and nine from their 47 and a half yard line. Wilson play fake looks to the left. He's got pressure, throws the ball deep and overthrows the target Bowden. Wilson got clobbered back on the other end by Julian Rochester as he just after he let that ball go and he overthrew his target Bowden who was streaking down the far sideline to the right. It's an incomplete long pass. Well, I'll tell you, great thing that Rochester got in quick on that one. Because if Wilson had a split more second to hold on to that football, that would have been six points for the Wildcats. Just more air needed. It was an inside takeoff against press man-to-man. -man. Good play call. Third and nine now. They come back to the line of scrimmage at the Cats' 47-yard line. Wilson to throw, lobs it up to the near side, and broken up flags come in everywhere. The receiver was Ahmad Wagner. He was backpedaling. Down the near sideline, but Tyson Campbell is going to be flagged for pass interference. And Kentucky will get 15 yards and a first down. Tyson Campbell. Defense. defense, number three. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And Tyson Campbell just has to get his head turned around right there. It was a back shoulder fade. And as the receiver turned around to look for the football, the momentum of Tyson Campbell just carried himself right through the Kentucky receiver. That's what drew the flags. But if you're the dogs, you want to make Kentucky live in that third and long situation. You're going to win the majority of the time. A penalty flag uh, will put the Cats on Georgia's just outside their 37-yard line. Moving to the right, snap to Wilson. Dumps it middle screen over the middle to one of the big tight ends. That's Conrad. Not Ball's a lot of out. space. Ball came out. Uh, the ball came out. Georgia thinks they have it. Big pile at the 34-yard line. They're still wrestling for it. No word yet from the officials. Now Georgia, now there's a flag. Barnett came out with the football. No indication from Hubert Owens and his officiating crew. There are flags down after the pileup. Conrad had the ball taken away. Kentucky's offense is coming off the field, so apparently the ball will be Georgia's, but let's check out this whole situation with the penalty mark. The field was a fumble by Kentucky, recovered by Georgia. After the play was over, a sportsman like conduct, number 71 on the offense, 15 yard penalty. That's number 71's first on sportsman like conduct foul. Well, we came out on the plus side of that one as Conrad fumbled the screen pass. Georgia recovered it and then added 15 yards on the penalty by one of their linemen. Tyson Campbell 
Hondo tells me recovered the fumble. Juwan Taylor was one of the guys who helped strip it or at least made contact with Conrad on the tackle. And then Campbell got the ball when it came out, and Georgia will start this possession on the 48-yard line, their own 48 after the 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty on happened. Uh, I guess that information will have to be communicated from the coaches, uh, from the coaches box up here, Z, to get that information down to the field. Yeah, because the coaches will actually have the TV replay going on in their booth, so they're going to get more replays. Not going on with the scoreboard operator. Obviously, a negative play against Kentucky. They, they want to show as few views of that as possible inside the stadium. Dogs are first and ten at their own 48-yard line, leading seven to nothing. They run Hardman in motion across the formation from will throw it to the left side to J.J. Holloman, makes the catch, and then into Kentucky territory and pushed out of bounds by Josh Allen at the 46-yard line, and that's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four quickly for the Bulldogs. On the Cats, 46. They go no huddle. They snap it from with time, throws it high pass just off the hands, and Holloman jumped up in the air, tried to bring it in off his fingertips and incomplete. And quickly, it's going to be third down and four now for Georgia. Lonnie Johnson Jr. was in coverage with Holloman on that pass play. Yeah, Jake had Holloman too. We had a curl flat combination. Jake never set his feet on that one, was bouncing around a little bit. I think he initially wanted to go to his tight end in the middle and got off of his tight end a little bit late, never got his feet set to deliver a strike. From the Kentucky 46 on third down and four. Swift in the ball game with Fromm in the backfield. Jake's wanting to throw. He will find his target. Holloman down near sideline inside the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Lonnie Johnson, Jr., forcing Holloman out of bounds. But it's another scan of energy first down for the Bulldogs as they spot the ball down on the 26. That's a gain of 20, and the Dogs' offense will reset the chains on the far sideline and get ready to go again. No huddle. If there's somebody better on third, down in college football. I want to see him. Jake Fromm, a strike on a deep corner route. Very difficult throw into traffic, but delivered a dime. The touchdown earlier came on a third down play. Kentucky moves, gets back. Fromm with a play fake, turns around and throws. Incomplete overthrew his target, and that was again Holloman inside the five. Ball sailed over everybody's head and landed in the Cats end zone. Down to our left, it's going to be an incomplete pass. Second down and ten for Georgia on the Kentucky 26, leading seven to nothing with a minute 24 to go in the first quarter. Misread there by Jake. Free safety sitting in the middle of the field. I don't think he ever saw him. And if that ball would have been on target, he would have been Holloman would have been blown up or would have been picked off. Three receivers, Ridley, Hardman, and Nauta to the right, one to the left. That's Tyler Simmons. Holyfield's in the backfield. Snap is high. Off the fingertips of From and he can't get to the ball. Catch dive on it. The snap was high from Trey Hill. He's our backup center. From couldn't reel it in. Then he couldn't fall on it either. Cats fall on it with Josh Allen at the Kentucky 34-yard line. They turned it over. Now we give it back a few plays later. Well, Lamont Gilliard going out. That's one of the things that you worry about. Quarterback center exchange, whether it's underneath the center or in shotgun, can, can be problematic when you have a center that's not been in a lot of game time situations. That snap high, nothing Jake Fromm could do about it. That's our fourth fumble we've lost this season. We put it on the turf 13 times and lost four of them. 80 seconds to go in the quarter. It's 7-0 Georgia. The Dogs were apparently driving for more points. Cats will get it on offense and give it to Benny Snell on first down. Snell patiently meandering to the right and looking for a little daylight. He sticks his head through there and gets a few to the 38. Ledbetter and Davis on the tackle for the Georgia defense. Another good patient run there by Benny Snell and a good push by that Kentucky offensive line. He just stayed right behind that blue wall and picked up four yards. Play fa- or fakes the pass. Wilson faked the pass to the left. He'll pull it down and just run it on the right side, working his way up across the 45 for a first down, and he'll spot it closer to the 46, I believe. Now, a lot of action right there. The Kentucky backfield with the fake throw, but that's nothing more than a counter play. You get a couple of big offensive linemen pulling across the formation. Well-executed run. Eight-yard gain on the quarterback run. First and 10, Kentucky. Ball on their own 46-yard line. Georgia leading at 7-0. Less than 20 seconds to go in the quarter. They'll give it to Snell. 
And Snell, not much of anything there at uh, left tackle and left guard. We piled it up very good with big Jordan Davis. And then uh, somebody came down the line from behind, McGee and Campbell, to make the stop on Snell as the hole was just piled up with that big body of Jordan Davis. So no gain on the play. It's going to be second down from the 47. They may have given him a yard. So second down and nine. That's the end of the first quarter. Georgia seven, Kentucky nothing. And a timeout in Lexington. Back in a moment on the Bulldogs Sports Network. As we go down to the sidelines, Chuck Dattle, Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck? Okay, we got one of them back. DeAndre Walker came out of the locker room during that timeout, during that break between quarters, and he is back in the lineup. All right, Chuck, very good. We need that as the Cats are near midfield, second down and nine. They bring a man in motion to the near side. That's Bouvier. He'll line up in the slot temporarily. They'll hand it to Snell. Snell runs at right tackle, and the pile moves just barely across the midfield stripe into Georgia territory by a few inches. Rice and Crowder are linebackers jamming it up, and Devontae Wyatt on the stop as well. And the ball is just across the 50. It was a three-yard game for Snell. It's third down and six now for Kentucky. Steady diet right now. A single safety mixing a little bit of too high every once in a while, but the dogs getting another guy in the box pretty consistently. Shotgun snap to Wilson. Quick throw to Bowden. He plants and changes directions, makes McGee miss, and then he runs into a crowd of white jerseys around the 40. J.R. Reed leading the charge uh, for the Georgia secondary, but uh, Bowden picks up first down yardage. One guy has the ball marked at the 40. The other has it at the 39. They'll spot it uh, closer to the 40. And the gain was 10. And again, dogs just too soft when they're getting that single safety look. We're, and we're leaving so much space right now between our defenders in the, in the secondary and the receivers. Quick passing game, just easy pickings for Kentucky. Fake the toss left. Wilson looks downfield, nowhere to go. Running hard to the right. We're chasing him. He's just going to throw it over the Georgia bench. They ran a fake pitch to Snell on the near side, and then Wilson had time to look downfield, had nothing there, and then just had to run for his life to the right and threw an incompletion on purpose. Yeah, all coverage right there for the dogs. Pretty good protection originally by Kentucky, but, but excellent job downfield. Finally, we get enough pressure on him. Tyreek McGee, Devontae Wyatt in pursuit. Second and 10 for the Cats from the Georgia 40, or 39 and a half, actually. There's the snap to Wilson. He'll give it to Snell. He pulls his way by his lineman down inside the 35 to the 34. That's a six-yard pickup for Snell. Uh, he must wonder what it's like to be able to co get a complete stride in his run because most of his runs he, are just like tiptoeing and, and waiting for a hole to develop, pushing linemen out of the way. He can never get into full stride with the way he has to run between the tackles. No, but he is one powerful man as well. Good job there, finding his blockers, getting right in behind him, and a nice solid pickup to get Kentucky third and medium. Reed made the stop, third and four for the Cats. They're on the dogs, 34. Wilson's going to pull it down and keep it a quarterback draw. We trace him with LeCount. Did he get enough? I don't think he did. Wilson able to stumble and dive for the first down. Richard LeCount came up and couldn't get enough contact on him to get him for the turf to make it fourth down. Wilson pulled away from the tackle, dove out of bounds on the near sideline beyond the first down marker and got the first down at the 29. It's a five-yard gain. Well, we lost contain. Then you're right. Richard LeCount had a chance to come up and make a tackle. Just a poor angle there by LeCount that allowed Terry Wilson to get to the outside and stretch out and get the first down. They're going to go with a Wildcat now. Benny Snell back at quarterback. Wilson flares out to the right. They snap it to Snell. He fakes like he's going to pass it, and then we just clobber him at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Clark shot through low and grabs Snell around both legs, down around the knees, and stops him at the line of scrimmage for no gain, maybe even a loss. Nope. They, they, the yard marker across the way had it a one-yard loss, but they put the ball back on the 29 for no gain. That's a way to eliminate yards after contact right there. Wrap up Snell by the ankles. Second and 10, 10th play of the drive of the possession for the Cats. They're on the dogs' 29-yard line. Georgia leads it 7-0. We're early in the second quarter. Wilson back at quarterback. Shotgun snap. Give it to Snell. He tiptoes up to the line of scrimmage, then hits the hole, and straight ahead for about three yards, maybe to the 26. 
Malik Herring, sophomore lineman from Forsyth, Georgia, and Julian Rochester, the junior from Powder Springs, on the tackle for the Dogs' defense. We substitute now as Big Davis and Patrick go out, and coming back in are Mark Webb and Walter Grant for the Georgia D. Ball's on the 26 for Kentucky. Third down and long here, third and about seven. Snap to Wilson, drops back. Here comes pressure, throws it down the middle of the field. Bowden, or Bowden rather, makes the catch at the 19. Spins in towards the hash mark down the field to the 12-yard line before we make the stop. Jawan Taylor, Richard LeCount on the tackle. Bowden's got some moves. After he catches that football, he can change directions on a dime. Well, he can, and dogs had pressure on that one. We actually ran into each other and knocked one another down, and we just can't get the Wildcats off the field. Kentucky now five out of seven on third down 14 yard gain Kentucky trying to get down and tie it up perhaps they're on the Georgia 12 yard line out of the pistol Snell will take the handoff waits for the hole to develop he sees a little daylight and runs through it inside the 10 down to maybe the nine as we piled it up on that right edge of Kentucky's offensive line uh, Snell got positive yards on the carry, however. I don't know if he got a full four or not. He did. And the ball's at the eight. So second down and six for Kentucky inside the Georgia 10. We substitute defensively once again. Wilson in the shotgun. Snell offset behind him to his left. They slide. Richardson in motion to the right. Hand it to Snell. No, he fakes it. Wilson will keep it, and we read it well with J.R. Reed and DeAndre Walker as they stop the Kentucky quarterback trying to run to the left. It's after a play fake to Snell, we stop him at the six. He did get two, but it could have been a lot worse than that if we hadn't minded our business, but we did. Yeah, great discipline there by Georgia defensively. Two dogs in position to make that play on the read option. The Wildcats can get a first down here. First down yard marker is sitting on the two-yard line right now. Third and four for Kentucky. They're going to go Wildcat with Snell. Snell back at the quarterback position. Motion man back and forth, and now flags all over the place. Their tight end may have moved early. False start. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, one of their linemen moved. And that's going to back him up a little bit now. Luke Fortner, a reserve lineman, moved early. Ball back on the 11 after the five-yard penalty, and it's third and nine for Kentucky. So nine for a first down and 11 for a touchdown. Dogs substitute defensively late. Wilson in the shotgun, Snell in the backfield. And now, hang on, somebody calling time. Yeah, Kirby ran down, didn't like what we saw. Just got the time out of here. Georgia calls time. We will, too, with 9.08 to go in the second quarter. It's Georgia 7, Kentucky nothing on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Piedmont Healthcare is our radio booth sponsor, and Ambetter is our first half broadcast sponsor. Better is taking charge of my health. It's third and nine for Kentucky on the Georgia 12. Wilson in trouble in the pocket, going to be sacked back at the 17 yard line. Channing Tyndall, a freshman linebacker from Columbia, South Carolina, gets in there for his first sack of the year, and it is a big one here in the SEC divisional title game, if you will. Back on the 16 yard line, the loss was four, and it is fourth down for Kentucky. Kentucky, and they're going to go try for a field goal here for about 35 yards or so. Dogs brought the house, played cover zero, and just overwhelmed the Kentucky offensive line there. 
This is Chance Poor, who kicked his first collegiate field goal last week in their come-from-behind win over Missouri. On the near hash, kicking to the left, Poor puts it up, and it is good from 34 yards to get the Kentucky Wildcats on the board with another All-State good hands field goal. 7-3. to three. That was a long mammoth, time-consuming drive. Georgia's defense liked it that they only gave up three. 7-3, to three, Georgia leading Kentucky. Back in a moment, Bulldog Sports. Network. First half broadcast presented by Ambetter. Better is taking charge of my health. Kentucky's drive was time-consuming. 15 plays, 50 yards. It took almost eight minutes. It started in the first quarter. It ended in the second quarter with a 34-yard chance poor field goal. It's 7-3 Georgia. Cats will kick it off with Grant McInnes from right to left. Mecole Hardman stands a yard deep in the end zone on the near hash. Here's the kick by McInnes. Uh, won't be returnable. Hardman walks away. Ball lands over the back line of the end zone for the touchback. Let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's pest control report, Chuck. Yeah, just another injury to report. Uh, Henry Glenn, one of the members of our medical staff, got kneed in the back of the calf by one of the players coming off the field. He had to go over on the table. He didn't go into the tent. They've wrapped it nice. I've explained to him that anybody can play when they're healthy. So he's coming back. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. First and 10 on the 25 for the Dogs, who lead it 7-3. to three. Trey Hill stays in the game at center. Lamont Gilliard injured in the first quarter. Fromm going to hand it to Holyfield. Elijah bouncing out to the left, trying to spin by tacklers up close to the 30. They'll spot it on the 29-yard line. Again, a gain of four and change. Josh Allen, Chris Westry on the tackle for the Kentucky defense. Dogs in desperate need here of a time-consuming drive. Cats right now, 16 minutes, 47 seconds, a time of possession. The Dogs have had it for four minutes and 50 seconds. If anything else, just need, need to give that defense a bit of a rest. Snap from Hill again, a little bit high. Fromm brings it down, hands it to Holyfield. He dances behind the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. Got about a half a yard to the 30. It's going to be third down and five and change for the Georgia offense as Swift will come into the game. Holyfield will go out. That snap from Hill, again, a little bit high, Z, and that, that really affects your timing. And, and it's exactly what I was about to say. It just disrupts the timing of the play. You could, you could see us at the exchange just having to stop so you lose all momentum. And this defense from Kentucky can play. They get to the backfield quick. So if that timing's disrupted, the play is disrupted. Swift offset to Fromm's left. Jake's in the shotgun. Snap, hand it to Swift. He runs behind Hill, breaks the tackle at the 30. 35, veers to the right, spinning and still on his feet up to the 38-yard line before being twisted down there near the Kentucky bench by Mike Edwards. But Swift's run gains a first down for the Dogs. It's brought to you by Scana Energy. Gutsy play call there, just a draw. You knew that Kentucky was coming. Gain of nine. Georgia goes no huddle quickly. Throw it to Swift out in the left flat. Oh, a nice stiff arm by Swift on uh, Devontae Robinson, but Robinson stayed with it, made the tackle at the far sideline at the 36 or 37. We actually lost some yardage on the play, lost about a yard and a half or maybe two back to the 36. Well, we snapped that football quick, and, and Jake, and I think it was Holloman on the outside, tried to adjust the route just to a quick hitch, but Kentucky in their recovery right ran right into the throwing lane there. Second and 12 from play fake, twirls the ball, throws it, caught by Ridley, puts a hand on the ground at the 48, twists around, does a 360, and gets it into cat territory at the 49-yard line. Riley Ridley with his first catch. Mike Edwards made the tackle. That's another scan of energy first down to the Kentucky 48-yard line. That's a gain of 16. Dogs go quickly, snap high. From pulls it down, gives it to Swift. He bounces out left to the sideline. Swift running towards the first down marker and gets by it at the Cats 38, I think. Westry made the tackle. Kentucky with a player 
slow to get up at the end of the play. One of their big linemen, Bohanna, still just sitting on the turf. They're going to check on him for the injury. Uh, let's see where they put the ball down. They put it at the Cat 38-yard line. Swift giving the dogs a bit of a boost, see, in the running game. Boy, there's no question. Able to find the edge there. And you can tell him he is. You can tell that he is now operating at full speed, able to outrun Kentucky defenders to the edge. They'll take the timeout for the Kentucky injury. 7-3, to three, Georgia leads second quarter. Back after this, Bulldogs Sports Network. Here in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth, we've just picked up another scan of energy first down. Our first half broadcast presented by Ambetter, taking charge of my health. Dogs first and ten at the Kentucky 37 and a half. Moving to the right, working on the far hash, handoff Holyfield who's back in. Elijah, jab step to the right, dodges back to the left and hits the hole at left tackle behind Andrew Thomas. And close to the 30-yard line, stopped at the 31. And the gain is about four or so. No, more than that. It's uh, about six or so. Fromm will check out of the ball game, and Justin Fields will come into the game at quarterback for the first time. Uh, Middleton made the tackle, by the way, for Kentucky at the 31. Great read there by Holyfield. Thought about popping that thing outside, but was able to stick his foot in the ground for the nice pickup. 6'3", 225-pound freshman Justin Fields in at quarterback. Goes empty set, snap to Fields. He runs immediately to the right, contact at the 28. He spins away from the tackler down to the 25. He got six yards on the run. Jordan Jones, a linebacker, senior for Kentucky, made the tackle. Fields will stay in the ball game for a second play. He got six yards and a first down for the Dogs. Ball on the Cats 25. Quick snap to Fields. He wants to throw. He pulls it down, tries to run to the hole at left of center. Kentucky will close it in a hurry, and they'll stop Fields at the 26-yard line. Cats, as soon as Fields came in, they went just to a too-high look. They've been mixing coverages up. Happened to play cover two there. Good job in coverage downfield. Nothing for Fields to do but pull it down and try to get something. Calvin Taylor made the stop, a one-yard loss back at the 26. Fromm is back in, second and 11 for the Dogs. On the near hash, moving right, Kentucky trailing Georgia 7-3. Dogs getting in scoring position here. Holyfield's offset to the right. Play fake from. Throws it to the left. He's got Holloman at the 20. Makes the catch. Tries to shed a tackler. They wrestle out of bounds on the far sideline at the 18, maybe the 17-yard line. Needs a couple more for a first down. Lonnie Johnson and Devontae Robinson, two of the cornerbacks or two of the defensive backs for Kentucky, wrestling Holloman out of bounds on the far side at the 17. The game is nine, second or third and two, rather, for the Dogs on the Kentucky 17-yard line. Different kind of a design on a play there. He had two hitches on the outside, but they were right in line with one another. So Fromm actually had to throw it over the slot receiver to get it to Holloman. We'll move the pocket to the right. Fromm throws on the run. There's Holloman, caught it at the 14, clobbered right there, but he got the first down, hit hard squarely in the chest plate on his shoulder pads by Lonnie Johnson, but the Dogs in the Massey-Ferguson red zone get another first down at the 13-yard line, a gain of four. Holloman took a blow. He's going to head to the side. No, that's Ridley heading to the sideline, but uh, J.J. hung on to the football, and the Dogs have a first down inside the Massey-Ferguson red zone. Experience the compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong. First and 10, Georgia on the Cats 13. Near hash to the right. Holyfield and Fromm in the backfield. Snap. Pulled down by Fromm. Play fake. Looking, looking. Throws it into the back corner of the end zone. He sailed it on the intended target. Jason Stanley. He was double covered. Fromm may have purposely thrown that one over everybody's head. There was nobody in that back corner of the end zone. Yeah, no question. We actually had an ins our inside receiver. Ran a little post. We had an under route coming underneath that. Well defended. If anything, we probably should have thrown it to the post, but pretty good coverage there. Inside linebacker support was dropping right into that under route. So good, smart decision to throw that one away. 
Wide side of the field to the left. 13th play of the possession coming up from Georgia. Two receivers left, one to the right. Ridley on the near side. Snap to Fromm. Pulls it down and gives it to Holyfield. Elijah running for the corner to the 10. There's a flag down. Angles out of bounds at the 5. They chase him there, but there's a flag in the Georgia backfield at the 14-yard line. And the official picks it up and puts it on the 10. Quit Chris Westry ran Holyfield out of bounds on the far sideline at the 5. The gain is eight if it stands. Here's Hubert Owens for the call, the referee. Holding. Offense, number four. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. Threw the flag for holding on Miko Hardman. And that'll back us up ten yards back to the, uh, well, back to the 20 is where they put us down. So it'll be second down from there. Second down and 17 yards to go for the Dogs from the Kentucky 20-yard line. Put the ball on the far hash mark as the Dogs trying to drive to the right. Kind of the southern end of the stadium here. Swift's in the backfield. Going to get the carry. DeAndre. Oh, wow, wow. Well, made a man miss at the 20, at the 15. Straight ahead down into the end zone. Touchdown and a brilliant run. Mike Edwards picking up stuff off the ground, including his own body. Swift gave him a move. He didn't recover. Swift sprints 20 into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. One of the more remarkable runs you're ever going to see. A couple of moves. Scott, you called it perfectly. Kentucky Wildcats right now grabbing hamstrings, grabbing ankles, <laughs> grabbing everything they can possibly grab as DeAndre Swift just left blue jerseys in the wake on the ground. Wow. <laughs> you hear all the time, he stuck a foot in the ground. Well, that's what he did that time, and he went in the opposite direction as uh, Blankenship will kick the extra point and continue his consecutive streak. It's up and good. The touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Georgia 14, Kentucky 3, late in the second quarter. Timeout back in a moment on the Bulldog Sports Network. First half broadcast brought to you by Am Better, taking charge of my help. For more information, visit betterisga.com. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Our Georgia Medals drive summary, 14 plays, 75 yards for Georgia, 555 off the clock. DeAndre Swift with an ankle-breaking 20-yard sprint to the end zone to make it 14-3. to That's the drive summary brought to you by Georgia Medals from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. Blankenship delivers another long kick into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be the Cats ball with 2.28 to go in the half at their own 25. Coming up halftime, stay tuned for the Amco Transmissions halftime report with Neil Williamson. Amco Transmission Centers of Metro Atlanta sponsors our halftime report. Scott, there are times in everybody's career when you have that moment when the other guy on the other side of the ball is just better than you and you know it's time to quit. After that <laughs> run, there may be three or four Kentucky Wildcats that, that are asking themselves, should I be playing? <laughs> it, was a, it was a thing to see. Here's Snell as he angles and bowls and runs straight uh, on an angle and on a line this way at the 27-yard line. Maybe we stacked it up pretty good after a two-yard game on the right side. Big Jordan Davis, one of the guys getting up off the bottom of the pile. The gain was two to the 27. Second and eight for Kentucky. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. The center judge over the ball as Georgia makes some substitutions. Wilson's back in the shotgun. Asim Rose is in the ball game now. A.J. Rose, a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, in the backfield with Wilson. Shotgun snap. Wilson will fire. And a nice diving effort. 
The catch is made going into the Kentucky bench at the 32-yard line. David Bouvier made the grab. Oh, Benny Snell may have injured his ankle as he left the ball game, limped off the field, and that's why Rose came into the contest. Bouvier makes a nice catch at the 32, a gain of five. It's third down and three for Kentucky with 143 to go in the Blue quarter. The field was a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. That's the voice of Hubert Owens, our referee. They're going to take a look, see if uh, Bouvier got the feet in bounds on the Kentucky sideline. And uh, the play under review is brought to you by Barbasol, offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99. For members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude, submit your nominations at georgiadogs.com. Third down and three for the Cats on their own 32-yard line. Wilson in the shotgun. And Rose stays in the ball game. Quarterback draw Wilson. We chase him down with DeAndre Walker. Fought off a block, reached, grabbed a bit of Wilson's jersey from behind, and then was able to kind of crawl up his back and pull him to the turf at the 33. Maybe it's fourth down. Great Walker, a terrific defensive play. Great individual effort there by Walker. Was able to get a hand on Wilson and then just didn't let go. And then a quick timeout by the Dogs. Still plenty of time left. A minute 30. To get the ball back here before halftime and maybe do some more damage. 14-3, Georgia leading Kentucky with 90 seconds left. As he said, the ball uh, is just beyond the Cats' 32-yard line. And Kentucky expected to punt it away here momentarily as Georgia stops the clock. We've got a second quarter recap presented by the Ag South and Ag Georgia Farm Credit. Loans for land and farm. Both teams have had long, long time-consuming drives. Kentucky got a field goal out of theirs. Georgia got a touchdown out of its long 14-play, 75-yard drive that took almost six minutes off the clock. A 24-yard run by DeAndre Swift. And Georgia also has a uh, four-yard touchdown catch from uh, by Isaac Nauta from Jake Fromm. Both teams have turned it over once. That's kind of where we stand. The dogs lead by 11. Here's Max Duffy to punt it away. He runs to the right. Rugby-style kick. Miko Hardman chases it left. Lets it bounce on the 23. Still bouncing inside the 20. Dogs run away from it. We got <laughs> getting a little too close to it. All of a sudden, the ball took one of those funky bounces, and Riley Ridley just turned and, and ran away from that thing. He didn't want it to hit him. Ball is dead at the 15-yard line. Long, bouncing rugby-style punt by Max Duffy from Perth, Australia. 52-yarder as he does his job and flips the field with 122 to go. Dogs have to go 85 yards for a touchdown. Not quite that far to get into Blankenship's field goal range. And still have one timeout left as well. Had to use one timeout there in that last offensive series from Kentucky. Burned one earlier in the game as well. All right, here we go with 122 to go. First and 10 on our own 15. Fromm gives it to Swift. He'll run it. DeAndre bounces out to the 20 and angles left to the sideline. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. He got nine yards on that first carry. Boy, Swift is so much fun to watch. He got nine yards on the run, got out of bounds to stop the clock with 116 to go. Yeah, you can tell he is full speed ahead now after battling through just a nagging injury earlier in the season. Looks like a completely different man out there on the field right now. Swift has uh, rushed for almost 50 yards here in the first half. Stays in the ball game. Two receivers left, two to the right. Fromm to throw the far hash. Looking, looking. Now pulls it down. He'll run it. Swift, or rather Fromm, pulled away from one tackler. Falls across the 25. Hit the turf. Got the first down. There's a flag down behind him at the 21-yard line. That's going to be a face mask on Kentucky. As Fromm was moving up in the pocket, looks like as I'm not sure who it was from Kentucky, but reached out. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 92. 15 yards added to the end of the run, first down. So that's Phil Hoskins, defensive tackle from Kentucky, just reached a big paw up there and grabbed the side of Fromm's face mask. So big change in yardage there all the way up to the 41-yard line. Dogs in business with a minute nine left. Yeah, that was plus 16 with the, uh, with the penalty. So first and 10, Georgia at our own 41 with 65 seconds left. We go again. Fromm will throw it all the way across the field to this side. Caught by Ridley at the 46. They twist him 
uh, keep him in bounds. They keep the clock running. And the play ended up out of bounds. Two tacklers, including Beatty, twisting Ridley out of bounds, but they keep the clock moving. It's at 47, 46. The ball's on our 45. The game was only four. Four receivers set from the throw. Dumps it over the middle to Swift. Swift at midfield. Breaks a tackle. 45, 40. Chased out of bounds at the 38 of Kentucky. Swift was wide open in the middle of the field, Z. It was an easy option. Great check down there by Fromm. Pressure was kind of swarming in, swarming in around him. Dumps it off to Swift. But the recognition of Swift there to get yardage and still get out of bounds. We've conserved our timeout to this point. And after that last play, did a good job, the dogs did, of getting back up to the line of scrimmage. There was a lot of movement there that Fromm had to organize. Did a very good job. Still very much in business. Swift got 17 to the Kentucky 38. 35 seconds remain in the half. Georgia leading at 14-3, looking for more. Fromm throws. He's got a man on the near sideline. Godwin makes the catch, and he steps out of bounds as he backpedals into the Kentucky sideline at the 30. That's a gain of eight, and it'll be second down and two on the near hash at the Kentucky 30-yard line. Clock stopped with 32 seconds to go. Jason Stanley was on the outside there. Take off to clear the zone. Quick out by Godwin. Good pick up again. Conserving the clock by getting out of bounds. Brom now 10 of 13 as he approaches 100 yards and throws and passing yardage here in the first half. Brom not pressured. Dumps it off right to Swift. Swift catches it at the 32. Then down the near sideline on the Kentucky side of the field and out of bounds around the 27. And the clock stops with 27 seconds. So that was only a three-yard gain. But the clock is the important thing here now with 27 seconds left. And Georgia still with a timeout remaining. Kentucky in a two-cloud look. So they've got their, their two cornerbacks are up in a two-deep look. But they've got another another defensive back that is in the deep middle of the field. They've got the deep thirds covered as, as well. So forcing the dogs to go underneath. Cats out of that look now. But look like they're going to roll back into it. First down at the 27 front hit as he throws, launches it down the hash to Godwin. It's incomplete over everybody's head. Fromm took a hit from Beatty, who came in from this left corner out of the Kentucky secondary, delivered a shot to Jake Fromm. The incomplete pass stopped the clock at 23 seconds to go. Second and 10, Georgia on the Kentucky 27-yard line. Scana Energy is a proud partner of the Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the dogs score, Scana Energy makes a $500 donation to the University of Georgia General Scholar. Fund. Really nice disguise there from Kentucky in the defensive secondary. They confused Jake Fromm. They ended up bringing a corner fire, which we never saw. Snap to Fromm. Throws it downfield towards the end zone. Overthrows the target, Ridley. He had man-to-man -man coverage with, uh, was that Beatty? Yeah, it was. Beatty and Ridley, both wearing number eight, were shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder into the right corner of the end zone. And the ball sailed over their heads incomplete. So now it's third and ten, Georgia, from the Kentucky 27. And 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Boy, Jake got what he wanted there. Finally got the man-to-man -man look that he had been looking for. Just overshot him. If he goes back shoulder on that one, that might be six points. Holloman and Hardman to the left. Nauta and Ridley to the right. Third down. The Dogs 4-5. Third down conversions. We fumbled the football on the exchange. Kentucky recovers it at the 29-yard line. We tried to run a little run pass option from and Swift. They botched the handoff in the exchange and the Cats Josh Allen recovers his second fumble for Kentucky and that ends the th scoring threat for the Dogs with our second turnover. 15 seconds remain in the half and the Cats will have the ball on their own 29. Yeah, Jake just never secured that snap. That one was on target. He was just bobbling as he was trying to gain control of it. That's when the mesh between he and Swift happened and the ball just popped out. So 15 seconds to go. We'll see what Kentucky tries to do here on their own 29-yard line. Two receivers to the wide side of the field to the right and one to the near side left. They run out of the pistol, and they will run with Rose as Snell stays on the sideline. He was uh, injured earlier in the ballgame. They just run it straight ahead for a couple of yards, and the clock will run out. Dog fans, whether your favorite seat is right on the 50-yard line, it comes with a bird's-eye view. Head to StubHub and grab 100% verified tickets so you know you'll get in. StubHub getting fans into the game for over 17 years, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Georgia Bulldogs. That is StubHub. So the half comes to an end, and Georgia leads it 14-3. to 
to three. Didn't end on a high note with that turnover right there as we were in scoring position, but Georgia will take what they have here with uh, an 11-point lead against a very good Kentucky defense after 30 minutes of play. Yeah, no doubt about that. Points left on the board for the Dogs. Both fumbles came in scoring position, so you have to think at least six points, you know, maybe even ten points left on the field for the Dogs, but overall in control of this football game. Our halftime interview with Coach Kirby Smarts brought to you by Delta, the official airline of the Georgia Bulldogs. And we'll head down to the field here in just a second to uh, Chuck Dowdle, who's standing by to talk to the Bulldogs head coach, who uh, has his team in front of Kentucky by a score of 14-3. to We're at halftime in Lexington for the SEC Eastern Division Championship. And we'll throw it down to Chuck, who's going to talk to the coach right now. Thanks so much, Scott. Coach, I know you, you got the lead in the scoreboard, but I know you feel like you left points out there. Yeah, we left three out there. We got two turnovers, which is not us, but we don't have our, you know, Lamont's out. We got to settle down, catch the snap, and do a good job with it. We get the ball to start second. Let's go after him. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> All right, well, there you heard it. Uh, you know, he feels the same way we do. Those those two fumbles, like you guys were pointing out, would certainly cost the dogs some points. Both were when the dogs were in scoring position. And, Chuck, I also noticed that uh, Kirby always likes your your uh, your instructions and your, uh, your encouragement. He always agrees with you. Uh, well, you know what? I try to be that. You know me. I'm a, I'm a glass half full guy, except right now I'm a glass um, about, uh, as I say, 11 point guy with more to come here to start the second half. All right, Chuck. Thanks very much. 14 to 3. We're at halftime. It's the end co-transmissions halftime report with Neil Williamson coming up next here on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. 48 cancer centers. You can learn more at builttobeatcancer.com. Our second half adjustments are served up by Buffalo Wild Wings, the proud hangout for Georgia Athletics. Wings, beer, sports, Eric Zire, halftime adjustments. Well, hold on to the football would be the, the big one because <laughs> other than that, it's, it's been a, pretty much a dominating uh, first half by Georgia offensively and defensively. I, I think the things that we thought coming into this game hold true. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, obviously you've got to keep uh, your eye on Benny Snell, get another guy in the box, shut him down. If there's anything I want to see us do more of, it's press coverage to take away the quick game quick passing game from Kentucky and that initial first read from Terry Wilson because he has a hard time getting to the second and third guy so same thing there on the offensive side of the ball stay true to your identity keep pounding the rock here's Grant McKinnis with the second half kickoff from left to right it's returnable Perry and on the two up the hash or up the uh, numbers on the near side bumped out of bounds as he crosses the 20 to the 22 yard line ball came down on about the two. Harry and ran it back to the 22, a 20 yard return, and the Dogs will have the ball first and 10 as we uh, watch here in third quarter action from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here at Commonwealth Stadium. Uh, Bulldogs football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Jake Fromm, 11 out of 16, 89 yards, one touchdown in the first half. DeAndre Swift leading all dogs, running the football, seven attempts for 57 yards, 8.1 average. Holyfield in the backfield with Swift now on first and 10 from the 22. Elijah gets the handoff, and Kentucky will jam up Holyfield, trying to rip the ball out of his hands. Josh Allen, the All-American linebacker. Uh, collects his third stop of the ball game, but uh, Holyfield able to push the ball forward to the 23, just beyond the 23-yard line, about a, not quite a full two-yard gain. Second down, eight and a half, eight and long for the Bulldogs. And another Trey Hill is still at center, by the way, for the Georgia offense. Yeah, and another snap just slightly high there, so uh, we, we've had problems with that as soon as Lamont Gilliard's come out of the football game. Fromm will take the snap, throw it wide to the right to Ridley. Makes a man miss at the 30. Ducks under the tackler and out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Ridley broke the tackle from Derek Beatty. He just lowered his body and got away from his grip and then got about 10 more yards to the 41. That's a scan of energy. First down for the Dogs up to the 41-yard line. Let's check in with Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report. Guys, Lamont Gellard came back out in uniform for the club, and I, that makes me think, and he ran back out here, that uh, that he may try to give it a go. We'll see. All right, we will see. Thanks, Chuck. Mike Edwards made that tackle on Ridley, forcing him out of bounds at the Dogs 41. Georgia moving to the left. We bring Holloman in tight from the left side. 
Holyfield's alone setback. Handoff. Holyfield bounces out to the near side. It's a race to the corner. Holyfield 45 50, 45 40, 35 30, and dragged down in Kentucky territory at the 29 yard line by Chris Westry. And a big scan of energy first down on the run. Everybody was on the far side of the field. It was just one on one Holyfield and Westry. And Elijah got the ball down to the Cats 29. Dogs in a two tight end set. Two receivers on the outside. So ace personnel. Then we brought our receiver on the left side of the formation in tight, which is why everybody was down in the box. Holyfield then using that speed to get outside and outrun those in the blue jerseys. 30-yard gain. Swift is in. DeAndre runs it at right guard, and he tries to spin away from the defender, but not much happening there as uh, they kept a pretty good grip on him. Middleton, the big defensive tackle, and Jordan Jones, a linebacker. Had Swift and stopped him dead cold at the 28-yard line. He did get a yard, so it's second and nine now for Georgia on the Kentucky 28. First possession of the second half. We're in the third quarter, 12-29. Clock moving. Georgia 14, Kentucky 3. SEC Eastern Division Championship on the line here this afternoon. Swift alone setback. Two receivers right, one to the left for the dogs. We work near the close hash mark. They give it to Swift, and he is clobbered. And here comes a flag, and a one-man had him low. That was uh, that was one of the linebackers, Jordan Jones, who had him low, and he was twisting him down to the ground. And then he got clobbered by Darius West, and that's when the flag came in. Well, that's yeah, exactly right. I think that's going to be targeting on West. As DeAndre was tied up, had a guy underneath his legs, just as you mentioned, and West came in with the crown of the helmet. Defense. Number 25, contact with the crown of the helmet. 15 yard penalty. The previous play is under further review. All right, Hubert Owens, the referee, with exactly what you said, Z. Uh, they've called targeting. They'll take a look at it. And if it's uh, upheld, that's going to be After a sizable review, loss. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Wow. That didn't take any time. Is half the distance to the goal. Oh, my goodness. First down. All right, West is gone. West is out of the game. That quick review brought to you by Barbasol, giving you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab the premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with the code FOOTBALL at Barbasol.com. That targeting call ejects Darius West, a senior free safety for Kentucky, one of their best defenders, and it gives the uh, Bulldogs the ball at the Kentucky 14-and-a-half yard line, first and 10, and let's hope Swift is okay after taking that shot. Holyfield is back in the game in the backfield. First and 10, 12 minutes to go, third quarter. The dogs threatening here, leading 14 to 3. One receiver in the sunshine to the right. Fromm going to pull down the snap, hand it to Holyfield. He runs it hard, straight ahead, both hands, both arms covering the football. Right down the hash, inside the 10 to the 8. He got seven. It'll be a second down and three for the Dogs inside the Kentucky 10-yard line. Edwards made the tackle for the Cats' defense. Tremendous patience there by Holyfield, running that right behind Solomon Kinley and Andrew Thomas. We waited for that hole to open up, and then a good little burst there for the pickup of seven. At a tight end to the right. Holyfield's a lone setback from under center. Man in motion comes in tight. We angle it to the right. Holyfield looking for a gap. Not much there. Down to the six and stopped. It's going to be third about a yard and a half. Devontae Robinson in for West now as West was ejected on the targeting play moments ago. Robinson made the tackle. Kentucky right now just in a red two, so a two deep look. Now walking up. From pulls it out. He's going to run it to the corner. He got the first down, down to the third. I thought he was going to be able to make it to the corner of the end zone, but he ran into the pile, but he got the first down. It's going to be goal to go for the Dogs at the Kentucky three-yard line as Fromm pulled it out of the belly of Holyfield and rolled around the right corner for the first down. Boy, great fake by Holyfield, too. After the after Fromm pulled it out, Holyfield just sprinted off and carried a wildcat or two with him. They spot the ball at the four. That's a scan of energy first down for the Dogs. George in the Massey-Ferguson red zone. Experience
experienced compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong. Goal to go for Georgia on the Cats 4, leading 14-3, trying to add to their side of the scoreboard. Holyfield offset to Fromm's left. Snap is high. Fromm takes it down, gives it to Elijah Holyfield. He drives, dragging tacklers with him, gets the ball across the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia, and Elijah Holyfield. A little redemption for that offensive line after not being able to punch it in from one yard last week against the Florida Gators this time, manning up and taking it to the house. Big, strong push there by Holyfield as well. He dragged Daniel and his Q-tip club on his left hand across the goal line into the end zone. Holyfield just kept driving those legs and got into that blue turf for six more. It's 20-3. to three. That touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Here's Rodrigo Blankenship for the point after try. The snap and the hold. The kick is up and the kick is good. 21 to 3. Dogs score on the opening possession of the second half. 10 20 to go. Silence in Commonwealth Stadium now. The Big Blue Nation is stunned. Georgia 21 to 3. Back in a moment. Bulldog Sports Network. Georgia 21, Kentucky 3. The Dogs the first team to exceed 20 points against Kentucky's vaunted defense this season. The Georgia Medals drive summary is brought to you by Georgia Medals. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. A nine-play, 78-yard drive, four-yard touchdown run by Holyfield. Capped it, took 436. Here's Blankenship's kick from right to left, high, sailing end over end deep. And over the back of the end zone or by about four yards or so for another touchback. Cats ball on their own 25 as we look down upon Kroger Field here from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth. Liking what we see to start the third quarter, Eric. Yeah, there's no question about it. Dogs come out again doing damage on the ground, out physically a team that, that has been physical all year long, uh, getting some help with some penalties along the way as well, but doing what good teams do when you get some breaks like that you make the other team pay snell back in the ball game now tweaked his ankle at the end of the first half wilson stands in the pocket will throw and his throw is going to be out of bounds to the right as Georgia got pressure on him with, uh, I think it was Ledbetter, who fell down on the rush, then got up and was crawling back towards Wilson, and he just chunked it out of bounds on the right. And there may be a grounding penalty. I think the officials are discussing it. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. He's he still was, in the tackle box. You're 100% right, and there was no receiver over there. Attentional ground man. Offense number three. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. He was just backpedaling, Z, trying to get away from Ledbetter, who was crawling toward him, and he just threw the ball out of bounds. No receiver. He's in the tackle box. Uh, and as you heard Hubert Owens, the referee, say intentional grounding loss of down on the Wildcats. The ball's back on the 18. That's one of the things that you saw on tape. If Terry Wilson, if his first guy's not there, he, he loses where he wants to go with the football. He's going to try again, goes through the air. He hits his man Snell at the 22. We cover him up immediately. Monty Rice, the linebacker. Johnny on the spot from Madison, Alabama. Hits Snell right on the 22. And the uh, the gain is only four. It'll be third down and long for the Cats, third and 12. This is obviously not a position where the Wildcats feel comfortable having to throw the football. And you get in third and long situations like this. Dawes can pin their ears back right now and, and come. And we're working against the weakness from this Kentucky offense. Three receivers to the right side, only one to the left. Snell's in the backfield. Cats on third down, five of nine in the ballgame. Wilson waits on the snap. There it is. Drops back on the 13. Looks to the near side. Lets it fly and caught at the 29-yard line by Bowden. Nice leaping in the air catch. Tackle made by Tyreek McGee, but well short of the first down by about six yards. Boy, Bowden is a good, good player. Dynamic when he catches the football. Very athletic. Great catch right there. Equally as good a coverage by Tyreek McGee. Keeping the football in front of the chains. Seven-yard gain, but 
Too much to go for a first down. Bowden had a career day in the win against Missouri last week. 13 catches for 166. Here's Duffy to punt it for Kentucky. And Terry Godwin is the deep receiver on the 30. The rugby-style punter runs to the right, lets it fly. Deep end over end punt. Going to back Godwin up to the 15-yard line. He calls for the fair catch and makes it there. Long punt by Duffy. He's one of the better ones in the league. 56-yarders that time. Dogs ball on the 15, leading 21-3. Third quarter, timeout. Back in a moment, Bulldogs Sports Network. Champions for Charity game is on every time Georgia wins. Camp Twin Lakes, Salvation Army, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. And for every bowl game the dogs win, Walton Gas will donate $5,000. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Georgia huddles up on the 10, break the huddle. They'll have the ball first and 10 on their own 15-yard line, leading 21-3, to 8.49 to go in the third quarter. Dogs on the near hash moving left. From in the shotgun, Harrion's in the backfield, offset to the left. Brian gets the carry, goes with the flow to the right, and Kentucky stuffs it after a one-yard gain for Harrion. Tried to get around the right edge over there where Isaiah Wilson and Cade Mays are, but Kentucky flowed right down the line of scrimmage and defended it well. Harrion got a yard. It'll be second. Oh, he got closer to two, actually. Second and eight. Chris Oates leading the charge for the Cats defense. Dogs now 136 yards on the ground. Remember, this Kentucky defense only giving up 107 per game coming into this contest. Second down, eight from our 17. Swift is in. DeAndre breaks the hole. Swift's got running room. Swift's got to go. All he's got to do is outrun five blue shirts chasing him. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Swift. Kentucky loaded the box, and the danger with that is if you can get clean to the second level, there's nobody there. And DeAndre Swift, we've been saying it, that young man is full speed once again, and the explosiveness is back. 83 yards to uh, his old Kentucky home in the left end zone. That touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. 27 to 3. Georgia one step closer to another SEC Eastern Division championship as Rodrigo Blankenship will try the point after. The snap and the hold. The kick is in the air and the kick is in the net. It's good. Blankenship streak continues 28 to 3. Well, I didn't think it could get any quieter, but it just did here in Lexington. Dogs, 28 to 3 on the Cats. Timeout on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Back in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here at uh, Commonwealth Stadium. We'll just watch DeAndre Swift run 83 yards, his career long run for a touchdown to put the dogs up 28 to 3. A two play drive, 85 yards, took less than a minute. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. Blankenship will kick it off again, and same result. 
as all the previous times he's kicked it off. It's a touchback. Sails well over the back line of the end zone. Cats, a dejected Kentucky crew, will have the ball on their own 25-yard line, trailing 28-3. to Let's go to the sidelines. Chuck Dowdle with a Cook's Pest Control report, Chuck. Yeah, it's got that 83-yard run by DeAndre. Pretty much did it. A lot of the big blue nation now heading out of the stadium. I guess going over to get in line at Rupp Arena. Basketball season starts Tuesday night for them <laughs> against Duke. And, you know, they just want to get an early jump. Yeah. Well, if they're staying at Rupp Arena, they're going to have a long wait because they're playing in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just get tickets over there. That's what they do. Yes. All right, we get your point. Here it's uh, first and 10 on the 25 as Kentucky will throw. Wilson fires to the tight end. Conrad, who reaches up and makes the grab. Tackled by Tay Crowder, the junior linebacker from Hamilton, Georgia, at the 33-and-a-half yard line, a gain of eight-and-a-half. And it'll be second and a couple for, uh, for the Wildcats. Yeah, just a... Quick out there by Conrad. Tay Crowder in very good coverage there. That ball thrown perfectly, though, from Wilson right over the red hat of Crowder. The Cats work on the near hash, moving right. Wilson will give it to Snell. Snell ducks in there and tries to move around the block of his center to the left. Drake Jackson was blocking, trying to hold on. Georgia's defense jammed it up at the line of scrimmage, but Snell got the first down. He didn't need much. Ledbetter makes the stop for Georgia. But it is a first down for the Wildcats. They'll get a few more tries here on the 35-yard line. And the Dawes can really pin their ears back and come now. Kentucky in a spot. They can still run it some, but really going to have to rely on the right arm of Wilson. They slide Conrad in motion to the left, the tight end. He's a wing on the left side. Wilson will fake it, set up on the left side. Our Crowder misses on the uh, sack opportunity, and then Wilson takes off and running. It looked like Wilson didn't even see Crowder coming straight at him, but he was able to sidestep him at the last second as Tay missed the tackle, and then Wilson angles to the left and gets out of bounds in the Georgia bench area at the 41-and-a-half yard line. He got... Uh, about seven yards on that scramble. Really, we should have had a sack back around the 30 or so. Yeah, there's no question. Crowder came in a little bit out of control, and Wilson very good athletically. Can hurt you with his, his legs as well if you let him get outside of contain. Three receivers right, one to the left for the Cats. Second down and four. And Wilson in the pocket, chased out of the pocket. And we'll get to the sideline, get the first down and a little bit more. Big Jordan Davis went after him. Malik Herring went after him. But Wilson way faster than those guys. Got the first down and out of bounds at the Georgia 49-yard line. Eight more yards, make it nine more yards on the run by the Cats quarterback. Well, look for the dogs here to make an adjustment. Just put a spy on Wilson because he can hurt you with his legs. We've already seen that. He rushed for 105 in their streak-snapping win down in Gainesville over Florida earlier this season. Drops back to pass here. He'll dump it off to the left side. Oh, knocked away and nearly intercepted by the linebacker, Natres Patrick, who had a tremendous jump on the ball as Wilson was trying to go to Conrad, the tight end on the far sideline. Natres diving in front of the uh, intended target, knocking the way uh, the football with one hand. But that was uh, that was interception bait. If you're a defensive back, you probably make that catch and down the sideline you go. Yeah, no question. Wilson just a little bit late getting out to his check down. Conrad, Natres Patrick in perfect position. Nice break on the ball. On the Georgia 49, snap to Wilson, hands off to Snell, barely across the midfield and back to the original line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a yard. That was a slow run by Snell, just trying to burrow his way through the gap there. DeAndre Walker with a tackle for Georgia. Uh, the game was one to the 48. It's third and nine for the Wildcats. Benny Snell now, 18 carries on the afternoon, 63 yards, only averaging 3.5 per carry. Swift has 141 for Georgia, by the way. That's a career high. Back-to-back weeks, he's established a career best in running the football. Third down and nine for Kentucky on the Georgia 48. Long snap count for the catch. Wilson takes the snap, throws it down the far sideline. A flag comes in as the pass is incomplete, trying to go to Ahmad Wagner. He was matched up with DeAndre Baker. And Baker had it pinned on the sideline. Defense, number 18. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, Wagner and Baker definitely got tied up, but the coaching staff 
for, for the dogs on the sideline, really giving it to the refs. Not sure exactly what happened. It looked like clear pass interference up here. Both guys were wrestling, looking at a replay. Wagner put his arms around Baker when the ball was coming, and they were both continued to kind of hand fight. I mean, that could have gone either way, but the flag goes against the defense on that one. Yeah, DeAndre actually had his hands out trying to get out of the way. That's probably what they were up in arms about. Cats get a break with a 15-yard penalty and a first down on the Georgia 33-yard line. They throw it to Bowden on the right side with a screen. Bowden weaves his way downfield inside the 20, down to the 15, maybe the 14. Juwan Taylor, the linebacker, with the tackle way downfield at the 14-yard line, and that's a 19-yard gain and another Kentucky first down as they uh, threaten to get one in the end zone here for the first time in this ballgame. Quick bubble screen on the outside. Good job by Kentucky getting those big offensive linemen downfield and out in front of Bowden. Bowden with five catches, 33 yards today. Let's update that to six for 52 now. Snap to Wilson. Fakes the pass left. Going to keep it and run to the right. Hit at the 11. Drags a tackler across the 10 to the 9-yard line. Richard LeCount made the stop for Georgia's defense, but Wilson pushes the ball inside the 10 to the 9. A gain of 5. Second and 5 for Kentucky. Starting to get a little late in the quarter. Dogs have a big lead, but Kentucky trying to punch one in the end zone here with 4.10 to go in the third period. It's 28-3. to three, Dogs lead. Design run all the way. We saw that earlier. It's just a counter play with Wilson running it the entire way. Fakes the little flare pass to the outside. Then Tucks that football and ducks in right behind two pulling offensive linemen. Play clock at five. Wilson in the shotgun. Snell behind it. Benny going to take the handoff. Snell going to get it into the end zone, breaking a tackle at the five or two tackles at the five, and then driving his way into the end zone for the touchdown for Kentucky. 28-9 to nine on the uh, nine-yard run by Benny Snell. Good drive there by Kentucky. Mixed in the pass. Got some help from the pass interference penalty. Stayed consistent with the run as well. And still some fight left in big blue country. Most certainly. They didn't get to 7-1 and one by giving up, even though they were down by a bunch. That was evidenced last week. They were down... 14 to 3 with less than six minutes to go in Missouri, and they ended up winning the ball game. There's a flag on the field at the After five the yard play. line. A sports and light conduct foul, number 65, grabbing an official. Number 65 is disqualified. 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Wow. And that's their uh, all conference guard, Bunchy Stallings, who has been ejected from the ball game. He's walking out of the end zone to the right. He hits the goal post support with his helmet. He's just walking straight into the locker room down on that end. Bunchy Stallings, their right guard, just been ejected. Second player tossed from the game. Darius West, the free safety, ejected earlier in this half after a targeting penalty. But Stallings, the guard, according to Hubert Owens, put his hands on the referee. Point after try by Chance Poor is good. It's 28 to 10. Georgia leading Kentucky with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. We'll keep it right here. Benny Snell's nine yard touchdown run gives the Cats their first touchdown of this ball game. It was a nine play, 75 yard drive. Took four. Carolina got a late touchdown to beat Ole Miss 48 to 44 in Oxford. Tennessee 14 to 3 leading Charlotte in a non conference affair in Knoxville. That's a third quarter score. Georgia Tech beat North Carolina today 38 to 28 on the Comcast Business scoreboard. The Cats getting ready to kick it off. And after the uh, penalty and the ejection of Bunchy Stallings, they'll have to kick it from the 20. So Grant McKinnis, former punter for Kentucky, will do the honors. And this one may be returnable for the Dogs unless uh, McKinnis has some kind of a bionic leg and can drill it 80 yards into the end zone for a touchback. We're going to have Mecole Hardman on the near hash on the 12, and Harrion creeps up to the 20 on the far hash as the return bit. Here's McKinnis' kick from left to right. High, angling towards Harrion, but we switched, and Hardman takes it on the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and hit at the 39-yard line. At the last minute, Mecole went over to the far side, and Harrion pulled away, so he kicked it right to Hardman. 
We put a little trickery on him. And, it was a little uh, cat and mouse. Yeah, how about that? We won. They were trying to kick it away from him. And uh, Hardman's return up near the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Michael Nesbitt and uh, Jamin Davis for Kentucky. They spotted on the 38-yard line. And the dogs, they've stayed consistent with that running game all day long. 29 rushes. We've thrown the football 17 times and look for us to continue to pound it on the ground. First and 10 on our 38. Less than four minutes to go in the quarter. Handoff goes to Holyfield. Elijah Holyfield runs straight ahead and looks like we've got a man shaking up Cade Mays. Another lineman rolling on the ground, grabbing an arm or an elbow. Oh, man. When it rains, it pours. A two-yard gain for Holyfield. And timeout has been called. Cade Mays is the injured player. Let's go down to the sidelines to Chuck Dowdle, Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck. Under his own power, there is... I think Ron Corson standing on, uh, kind of holding on to him on the right side, but Mays is going to get up and walk for the most part under his own power off the field. Looked like he was grabbing an arm or an elbow when he went down. I don't know if it was a so. hyperextension on his elbow. All right, we're told it might be something uh, along the lines of a shoulder injury, but we'll we'll see if we get any information. There's already a player in the medical tent. Cade Mays has to turn around. He was going to the tent. He has to turn around, go the other way, and wait on his turn. It's been that kind of day for the dogs, but we lead it 28 to 10. Second down and eight for the dogs. Hand off to Holyfield across the 40 45 outside the numbers into the Georgia sideline. He crosses over the midfield stripe and into Cats territory. Pushed out of bounds at the at the Kentucky 44 by Derek Beatty. That's a scan of energy first down on a 16 yard pickup. We'll move the sticks, get them in place, and the dogs will go no huddle from the Cats 44. Kendall Baker in for Cade Mays. We run right behind Baker on that one for a nice pickup. Justin Fields into the ballgame at quarterback for the dogs. So two backup linemen in the starting five right now, or in the lineup of five, Hill and Baker. Snap it to Fields. He runs to the left, stops, goes back to the right, ducks in the middle between the hash marks. He put a hand on the turf to keep his balance. And Justin Fields, rather, uh, picks up, uh, what, down to the 36, I guess. So he got, what, eight yards on that nifty run. Isaiah Wilson helping to block for the Bulldogs. Calvin Taylor, Devontae Robinson on the stop for Kentucky as Fields takes one snap and heads to the right side. Wilson, was he shaken up on shaken the play? Shaken up, slow to get up. Stayed in the football game, though, but was writhing in pain on Jeez. the ground for a second. Kind of has to. <laughs> My goodness. Fromm is back in. Fields came in for one play and got eight yards on the run. Fromm gives it to Holyfield. Reads a block from Simmons. Bounces out left to the 30. Didn't want to go out of bounds. Wanted to keep running in play, but they force him out of bounds on the Cats sideline at the 26-yard line. Mike Edwards as Holyfield and Swift now both over 100 yards in the ball game, and that's the first time that's happened to this Kentucky defense this season. The ball's on the 26-yard line for the Dogs. It's a first down Georgia. Yeah, 245 yards on the ground right now for the Dogs, and doing it with two reserve offensive linemen in the game right now in Trey Hill and Kendall Baker. Brian Harrion into the backfield. Lone setback. Fields goes, or Fromm rather, goes under center. One receiver left, one to the right. Two tight end set. Hand it to Harrion. Runs straight ahead, hesitates. Finds some daylight. Tugging and dragging. The Kentucky tacklers inside the 25 down to the 21-yard line. Devontae Robinson just hanging on to number 35's jersey, trying to get him to the turf. He finally did this shy of the 21. It's a five-yard gain for Brian Harrion. Second down and five for the Dogs. Less than a minute to go in the quarter. Georgia, as uh, you guys talked about at the in the tailgate show and in the pregame, just pounding on Kentucky and trying to prove a point as we get to the fourth quarter. And hopefully the uh, Bulldogs have worn down that Wildcat defense, and it looks like that's what they're trying to do here. Fromm with a play fake, rolls to the right on a naked bootleg, throws it to Godwin, caught it to 22. Terry hesitates. Now he cranks it up and runs on an angle to the right inside the 20, tackled at the 17 by Tyrell Agent, a freshman safety from Mansfield, Ohio. But the Dogs get in the Massey-Ferguson red zone with 12 seconds to go. That may be the last play of the third quarter. Massey-Ferguson experienced the compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong. 15 minutes to go into the third period. Georgia 28, 
and Kentucky 10 SEC Division Championship on the line here in Lexington on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. In, in black tape, I mean, he is wrapped, wrapped, wrapped. So I don't know. He wasn't limping as badly coming out. I'm hopeful that he may be able to try to get back in there. But uh, if I get an official word from the uh, from the Georgia sideline people, I'll let you know. All right, Chuck, thanks. If you know someone who makes an impact on their community, Team UGA presented by Georgia Powers, accepting nominations for members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude, go to georgiadogs.com to submit your nomination. Justin Fields is in the ballgame at quarterback. It's third down and a yard to go from the Cat 17-yard line. Snap to Fields. Justin, first down and a little bit more. Twisting away from a tackler at the 15 and falling forward down to the 13 and a half. Jordan Jones, a linebacker with that club on his hand, uh, made the tackle. Uh, but Fields does his job, gets the first down for the Dogs. It's first and 10. Cats have an injured player, as a matter of fact. Slow to get up. Uh, can't tell who it is. One of their big linemen. It's uh, Tymere DuBose, senior lineman, from Youngstown, Ohio, still on the turf. So play is stopped 14 seconds into the fourth quarter. And uh, that will give us time to tell you that Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. And back to the Cook's Pest Control sideline for another injury report from Chuck. Yeah, we've had too many of these today, Scott. But Cade Mays, it is a right shoulder, and he is out. Uh, so I've been told that for sure. Uh, you'll love this. The official word on, uh, on Miko Hardman right now is pending. All right. <laughs> Well, that's, that's more positive than out. We'll take it. Take what we can get at this point. Georgia 28, Kentucky 3. Dogs threatening for more here. With the ball, first and 10 on the Kentucky 14-yard line. They work between the hashes, moving right. From under center, power formation. Play fake, rolls to the right. Swift looking, looking, looking to the right. Now throws it low and hard down to the 11-yard line where the catch is made by Tyler Simmons as he goes to the turf and out of bounds on the near sideline at the 10-and-a-half. Uh, he got four yards or so. And Fromsey was looking back on the way, all the way on the other side of the field. It looked like he wanted to go in that direction first. Absolutely right. So we bootleg Fromm out to the right. We snuck Swift out to the left of the formation on a wheel route. That was a design throwback to DeAndre Swift. Good discipline there by Kentucky. It was well covered. So Fromm had to come back and just take what he could take. Two tight ends in the formation. Everybody's in tight as the dogs work on the Cats 11. Give it to Swift. He explodes through the middle of the line. Down inside the five to the four. Quick burst from DeAndre Swift. Stopped by Mike Edwards or else he's in the end zone celebrating six more. Swift now over 140 yards on the rush. Hill and Baker. Two reserves in the offensive front for Georgia. Opening up that seam for DeAndre Swift with his 11th carry, got it down to the four-yard line, a six-yard pickup. It's goal to go for the Dogs. We give it to Swift. He's looking, he's looking, sliding to the left. He's driving. We're getting some push from the line. They move it down to the one-yard line. Three-yard gain, DeAndre Swift, and a couple of three offensive linemen over there as well. Swift gets up off the pile. He's helped up by Kendall Baker, and the Dogs have it second and goal on the Cats' one. Between the hash marks, they work. Swift and Fromm in the backfield. Shotgun snap to Jake Fromm. Give it to Swift. He dives towards the goal line. Didn't get there. He stopped at the one. Boy, this is bringing up bad memories from last week as well. One thing that the dogs are doing is they're staying with multiple receivers in this game, trying to keep that interior line from being so bunched up. Hill is the center. Fromm goes under center this time. Third and goal from the one. Cat squeeze it in there. We give it to Fromm. He just takes it, tries to push his way into the end zone. Still didn't get there. No sign yet from the officials. He just piled in on top of Trey Hill as center. I don't think he broke the play, though. Kentucky has jammed him up here. And their linebacker, Jordan Jones, sprinting out of the pile in, uh, in joyous fashion. And Kentucky has a player slow to get up. The ball's inside the one. But it's fourth down and goal. And the dogs are not going to try for it here. They're going to go for the field goal, it looks like. Boy, another 
goal line stand here against the dogs. You know that's just got to be frustrating. This time we don't bring in jumbo personnel. We keep everything spread out wide, try to go quarterback sneak, which is zero push there in the interior line. But Jake on that last play just didn't get any kind of uh, any kind of momentum at all. He was right under the center, and he was just trying to run from a standstill right behind the center at Trey Hill, but he didn't get any forward movement. And there wasn't much surge on the line either. So now we're going to try a field goal of less than an extra point. A, they're going to spot it at the eight. 18-yard try. Flag down on the snap of the ball. We may have moved early. False start. Offense. Number 69. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Freshman lineman Jamari Salyer with a false start. Ball back on the five five and a half. Again, the kick will be between the hash marks. There's not uh, much of an angle at all. Jake Camarda will hold now on the 14-yard line. And Rodrigo Blankenship will try a 24-yard field goal, kicking to the right here in Lexington. Cats crowd the line. They've got a player behind the line of scrimmage jumping up and down. Now they back another player away. Here's the kick by Blankenship. It's up and good. So we got three. We were on the goal line again. Couldn't push it across, but it's 31 to 10. Dogs lead by three touchdowns on Rodrigo's blanket ships. All-state good hands field goal. 11.44 to go in the game. Dogs up 21 on Kentucky here on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Here in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth, we are watching Georgia try to run the table for the second straight year in the SEC East. The Dogs have won 12 straight over division opponents, trying to make it 13 in a row. They lead Kentucky 31 to 10. The Dogs had a 57-yard, 13-play drive, 6:55 off the clock, capped it with a 23-yard Blankenship field goal as Rodrigo booms another one over the back of the end zone for a touchback. But uh, Blankenship's kick makes it 31-10 to 10 Georgia with 11.44 to go in the game. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. You better buckle up because Sirius XM is zero to everything in 150 channels. You get commercial-free music plus entertainment, comedy, news, and coverage of every major sport, including Georgia football. So tune in, Sirius XM. Ball on the 25 for Kentucky. Terry Wilson, their sophomore 6'3 quarterback, takes the snap of the shotgun, stands in the pocket, has time to survey the field, now rolls to the right, and will throw it over the Georgia bench incomplete. Great Being chased by Tyreek McGeezy. Yeah, great coverage downfield as well. Nowhere for Wilson to go with that football. Finally, we're able to get a little bit of pressure on him and chase him out of the pocket. But the coverage just spectacular there. McGee, a 5'10 junior from Byron, Georgia, chasing as Wilson ran to the right and just unloaded it over the Georgia sideline. Second and 10 from the 25. Snap to Wilson. Here comes pressure up the middle. He's got a receiver, Richardson, at the 30. Taven Richardson, a junior from Greer, South Carolina, made the catch and up the field for a few more yards across the 35 to the 36. Rice and Baker on the stop for the Georgia defense. But the gain is 11, and it's a first down Wildcats. Yeah, just a quick hitch there against cover four, finding the soft spot in the, the zone. Richardson did the easy pitch and catch. 
A.J. Rose in the backfield now for the Cats. Wilson looks to throw, and he will, and he's got uh, Richardson again. The dog's giving him a little bit of cushion with DeAndre Baker, but uh, Taven Richardson made the grab in Georgia territory at the 49-yard line. The yeah, dogs look content right now to keep the football in front of them. Still a lot of time left in this football game, but they using the clock to their advantage as well, trying to keep any big plays from happening against them. 15-yard gain to the Georgia 49. Cats moving to our left. They trail 31-10 to here in the fourth quarter. Snap to Wilson in the shotgun. Pressure from the edges. Being chased out and down he goes. Rice with the sack. The ball came out after he hit the turf. But Monty Rice with the sack way back in Cats territory at the 37-yard line. Well, we played soft until they crossed the 50. Then we dialed up the pressure again. And it's something the Cats have had no answer for this afternoon. Every time we have brought dog pressure, linebacker pressure, uh, we've been able to get into the offensive backfield at will. That will bring us to our Nissan sack update. Uh, brought to you by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. Four sacks on Kentucky quarterback Terry Wilson today by the Bulldogs. Here's Wilson going to throw it deep to the far sideline. It's caught at the Georgia 45 by Isaiah Epps. Pushed out of bounds there by Tyson Campbell on the far sideline. He gets a little bit of that lost yardage back to the Georgia 44. It's third down and about five to go for Kentucky. Dogs again in quarters coverage. Epps just on a deep comeback there. Wilson in the shotgun. Rose in the backfield. No Snell in the game right now. Wilson squeezed in the pocket. Dumps it out to Rose on the right flat. He made the catch at the first down marker and will be tackled down at the 31-yard line by Natrez Patrick. Wilson kind of sneaked out of the backfield, Z, and was wide open on the right side of the field and got a little more than 10 yards on the carry, on the, on the pass play. Did a good job by Wilson. Wilson, who has struggled this year getting through his progression, that time got to his third in the progression for the first down. And he stayed in the pocket with pressure being squeezed on him. He'll throw it here. And it's juggled and caught by Kentucky down the far sideline, dragging into the end zone. Cats touchdown. That's Rose, A.J. Rose. That ball may have bounced off Baker on the far sideline. It bounced off well, Crowder. Crowder was in coverage on the far sideline. I couldn't tell if it bounced off his body or not, but it was being juggled on the far sideline. Rose came away with it and got into the end zone down the sideline on a 31-yard touchdown scoring play. Yeah, it looked like it bounced off of Crowder's helmet, then right into Rose's hands, and then the count couldn't bring him down, and the Wildcats, believing this miracle season, can continue. Here's Poor for the point after try. It's 31-16 to now. We've had guys go down left and right, and now Kentucky just went down the field in a hurry. The snap and the hold, the kick... All good. It's 31 to 17. So it's a two touchdown lead for Georgia with 9:01 to go in the ball game. A lot of time remaining. Timeout in Lexington. Georgia 31, Kentucky 17 on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Georgia led by 25 in the third quarter. The lead is 14 now here in the fourth quarter with 9.01 to go. Cats getting ready to kick off. The Champions for Charity game is on every time Georgia wins. Camp Twin Lakes, Salvation Army, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. And for every bowl game the Dogs win, Walton Gas donates $5,000. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Grant McKinnis to kick it away to our left. High end over in. Will it make the end zone? We'll see. It will, and we'll just let it bounce away. James Cook in the end zone replacing Miko Hardman, who was shaken up earlier in the ball game. It'll be a touchback, and the Dogs will have the ball first and 10 at the 25, and this is the point in the game where the Dogs need to seal this thing up with a time-consuming grind-it-out-on-the-ground drive. They're up two scores. They were up 
three and a half in the last quarter, but Kentucky has put a couple of touchdowns and long drives on the board. That was a 75-yard seven-play drive and a 31-yard uh, touchdown pass to Rose that bounced off Rose and off Crowder, our guy, and then back into the hands of Rose, and he ran into the end zone with it. And Dawes going to have to do it with a battered and bruised offensive line. And here's Holyfield bouncing out left at left tackle behind Andrew Thomas and Solomon Kinley doing some road grading on that side of the field. And Holyfield bursts his way for nine yards. It'll be second and one. Johnson and Robinson in the secondary make the tackle for the Kentucky defense. The dogs taking their time right now as you expect that they would. 8.35 and counting on the clock. No hurry, but... Have to grind out some first downs here and hopefully put this game on ice. Play clock at 13 from talking to his offensive line. Play clock at 8 now. He goes under center. Holyfield's in the backfield. Everybody's in tight. Second one on the 34. Hand off to Elijah. First down. And they hit him at the 36 and knock him down around the 36 and a half or so. But Elijah hops his way, bounced to the right, and got the first down. Cats have a player down. That's Derek Beatty slow to get up fans you're dedicated to your team and rocket mortgage is dedicated to you because when it comes to buying a home the right way should be the only way rocket mortgage proud mortgage partner of georgia athletics hubert owens going to stop play for an injury timeout we'll take the timeout as well 807 to go in the ball game georgia 31 kentucky 17 on the bulldogs sports network Along with Eric Zier, Scott Howard with you here in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth. Dog fans, whether your favorite seat is right on the 50-yard line or comes with a bird's-eye view, head to StubHub and grab 100% verified tickets so you know you'll get in. StubHub has been getting fans into the game for over 17 years and is the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of the Georgia Bulldogs, StubHub. First and 10 dogs. The ball's between our 36 and 37-yard line. It's placed between the hash marks. Dogs break the huddle, move to the right. Clock ticks, 742, 741. Beatty was the injured player that forced us into the timeout for Kentucky. Fromm's under center. Holyfield's in the backfield. We bring Stanley in motion in tight on the right edge. Now he goes in motion again. Jet sweep to Stanley. Stanley with a block around the corner. 40, 50. He's got some speed. 40 of Kentucky, 30. And tackled where? Out of bounds on the far sideline at the 29. Mike Edwards chased him down. Jason Stanley got the jet sweep and jetted off into Kentucky territory on the left side. Well, we brought Stanley in motion and then stopped him and then quickly brought him in again. I think caught Kentucky a little bit off guard. First time that we've run the jet sweep with Stanley in the football game. Now as we line up, there's a flag down. Sideline warning. Georgia. It's the first sideline warning. 37 yards on the run by Stanley. And it's first and 10 Georgia at the Kentucky 29-yard line. And the, you heard the uh, why the flag was dropped, a sideline warning on the Bulldogs. On the far side of the field here, Kroger Field and Commonwealth Stadium. Clock continues to move. That's final. 6.45. Play clock at 7. Fromm under center. Takes the snap. Hands it off to Swift. Swift ducks in there. Right guard and right tackle. Falls forward for a couple. Chris Oates, a linebacker. Just up the road in Cincinnati, Ohio, makes the tackle. The gain is maybe two. Let's see where they spotted it. Uh, a one-yard gain to the 28. Swift and Holyfield, both over 100 yards rushing the ball today. DeAndre, 152 yards on 14 carries. Holyfield, 117 yards on 17 carries. They've combined for three scores. From throwing the football, 14 of 19, 113 and a score. Second and eight and a half for the Dogs on the Kentucky 28. From to pass. He'll throw it towards the end zone. He's got a man. Oh, broke it up at the last minute. He was trying to go to Holloman. And Kentucky secondary saved him right there. Mike Edwards 
able to tap the ball away at the last second. He had Holloman. Holloman had the defense beat. He was behind the defenders by a couple of feet. And at the last second, Edwards got over in front of the ball and knocked it away on a nice defensive play. Yeah, that football just about two yards underthrown. If that's up over the top, that's six points all day long. And Fromm maybe a hair late in letting that one go. The incompletion stops the clock with 5.55 to go here in the game. 31-17 Georgia. Third down and eight and a half for the Dogs on the Kentucky 28-yard line. Play clock's at zero. Do we get a timeout or do they call it? Georgia. Yep, we got the timeout. It's their first time out of the half. Fromm was ready to take the snap. I looked up at the play clock and it's sitting there as a goose egg. But we got the timeout. And we'll take a timeout. 5.55 to go, 31-17. Georgia leading Kentucky here in the fourth quarter on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Schedule your next visit with a new online booking tool at piedmont.org forward slash UGA. Piedmont Healthcare, the official health care provider of the Georgia Bulldogs. Justin Fields is in the ballgame at quarterback for the Dogs. Four receivers set. We shift the tight end from right to left. That's Nauta. Fields takes the snap, runs left corner, 25-20, still running through a crowd. He may have the first down on second effort. He reached across the 20 and kept those legs driving, stretched the ball out. We'll see where they spot it near the 19. That's where we needed to go for the first down. I think he got it. Boy, huge block there by Isaac Nauta and Andrew Thomas, and then right over the back of Solomon Kinley as well. And then Justin Fields just knifes his way through the Kentucky defense. Justin Fields with a huge third down run to keep the possession alive for the Dogs down to the 19-yard line. It's first and 10 Georgia as the Dogs enter the Massey-Ferguson red zone. 523 on the clock. We're in the fourth quarter. Dogs leading by two touchdowns. From under center from the Cats 19. Handoff. Swift. Swift angles right. They grab him up high and yank him back the other way. Just slowed him down immediately. He was tackled up high by Beatty and Jordan Jones. At the 19-yard line, they're going to spot it back on the 20. No gain, actually a loss of a yard. It'll be second and 11 as the clock ticks under five minutes to go. Big push there by Kentucky defensively. Immediately into the backfield there at Georgia. DeAndre Swift hit almost as soon as he got the, the football there. And Fields is back in at quarterback for the Dogs. 440 to go. Holyfield offset to Fields' right. We shift the tight end. We're going to run towards the tight end side to the right. Fields knocked down at the 19, tried to spin away, knocked to the turf there. Cats know what's coming when Justin's in the ballgame. Just got to figure out which side. Knocked down at the 19, got a yard back. It'll be third and 10. Devontae Robinson, one of the guys in on the stop, and Kentucky has another player injured, laying on his back with his helmet off. And stoppage of play for an injury timeout. Clock at 4.18 to go with Georgia up 31-17. to Both teams, a lot of guys on the field this afternoon. Injury-riddled football game. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sport. Presented by Ag South and Ag Georgia Farm Credit. Loans for land and farm. The Dogs have rushed for a season-best 329 yards against this Kentucky defense, averaging 7.5 yards per carry. The Cats have only managed 79 yards on the ground today as the Dogs lead it 31-17. to And the Cats offensively doing it on the right arm of Terry Wilson. A little surprising there. 18 out of 22 for 193 yards. The ball is put in play. The clock continues to tick under four minutes. Play clock at 19. Dogs break the huddle. Get up to the line of scrimmage at the 19 of Kentucky. Moving to our uh, our right from the booth here uh, on the near hash. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Holyfield is in the backfield. We bring Godwin in tight on the right. 
Give it to Holyfield. Kentucky blows it up. No blocking on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Cats just move it right down the line of scrimmage and stop Holyfield for a loss back at the 21. Kentucky. And the Cats the stop the clock. The half. Please reset the game clock. 336. 336. Put two seconds on the clock. The ball is almost on the far hash, and Rodrigo will be kicking it to the right. He has a 23-yard field goal in the game today. He'll try for his second field goal here. And under 40 yards, he's hard to beat. This will be a 39-yard try from just inside the far hash, kicking to the right to put Georgia up by 17 points. Nick Moore's the snapper. Jake Camarda's the holder. Blankenship to try the field goal. Cats load the line, the snap and the hold, the kick in the air, and it is reaching, and it is good! Big kick, Rodrigo Blankenship puts three more on Georgia's side. Dogs 34, Cats 17. That's another All-State good hands field goal for the Bulldogs. Big drive there by the Dogs. Took a lot of time off the clock. Three points to extend this down maybe a little bit early with 11 minutes left that allowed Kentucky to creep back into this football game. Uh, but that good drive, no question, uh, has made this uphill climb for Kentucky that much more difficult. 332 left. Dogs will kick it to the right here as we watch it. And Blanket Ships, who's kicked him into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone all day, hangs this one up high. This one could be returnable. A yard deep in the end zone. Cats will run it out with Bowden. Bowden to the 10, to the 15. Angling to the near side, to the 25, to the 30. Tackled from behind. A nice tackle around the ankles by Stanley. Jason Stanley with that good speed got Bowden, who was hey, – he had a good return going there. I didn't like what I was watching on this near sideline with Bowden. But Stanley with a nice tackle at the 36-yard line. That's a long return for Kentucky of 36 yards plus a yard and a half deep out of the end zone. Boy, great effort there by Stanley. You're right. There was some room to run there for Bowden, if not for that great effort by Stanley coming from behind. Cats on the 36, their own 36. They trail by a bunch. Rose is in the backfield with Wilson, takes the snap. He'll throw. It's caught by Bouvier. David Bouvier, 5'9", senior from right here in Lexington, makes the catch on the left side of the field and gets out of bounds into the Kentucky bench area at the 41-yard line, a gain of five. And it's second and five. Clock stopped for a moment. And now it's ticking again, 3'12", 3'11". Dogs, four or five men in the rush. Here's uh, Wilson chased out of the pocket, being chased from behind by Wyatt. Just lobs it over the line of scrimmage. Caught low, palms up by Rose, and just hops out of bounds in Georgia territory at the 48-yard line. Dogs in cover two right now. Very, very soft, though, especially with that second level of the, the defense. Everybody getting plenty of depth. First down, Katz. Pressure from the edges. Wilson dumps it off to the back. Rose on the right side. Makes the catch. Dogs keep him in front and make the tackle at the 45. Jawan Taylor, the linebacker, plops right down on top of him. The gain is about three, second and seven. Clock moving, 234, 233. Georgia leads by 17 points, trying to wrap up a division title here in Lexington. Wilson backpedaling, throwing it, and completing the pass on a crossing route to Dorian Baker, his first catch of the game at the 41-yard line. Dragged down with Mark Webb all over him. Webb with his tackle, the uh, sophomore from Philadelphia, at the Georgia 40-yard line. It's going to be third and three to go as the dogs sprint Anderson off the bench to the far side. He gets off in plenty of time. Wilson on the shotgun snap, takes it and fires a completed pass to the tight end, C.J. Conrad, on the near sideline. He gets out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Another first down for the Cats, and the clock stopped with two minutes to go. The dog's more than happy to give the Wildcats exactly what they're taking right now. Short underneath, keep that clock moving. 152, it's on the move. Wilson, play fake, ducks under the defender. He got away from Harry, now he's off and sprinting out of the pocket to the right, and we'll chase him out with J.R. Reed, diving at his legs as Wilson scrambles out of bounds at the 21-yard line, far side of the field. Reed forcing him out of bounds, stopping the clock with 1.43 to go, and the gain was nine. It'll be second and one for Kentucky on the Georgia 22. Minute 43 to go, Georgia 34, Kentucky 17. 
Boy, Malik Herring in the backfield. Probably should have had a, had a sack there. Terry Wilson, elusive indeed. Four receiver formation. Wilson stays in the pocket, throws it for the end zone down the middle. It's in and out of the hands, I guess, at the three-yard line. Hit the hands of Conrad, the tight end. Mark Webb in coverage. Conrad going to the turf, didn't hang on to the football. Incomplete pass, stops the clock with a minute 39 to go. Inside post there by Kate Conrad. Pretty well-thrown football there by Wilson. That ball should have been caught even though the coverage was very good. Pass was down below his waist. The tight end Conrad was going to the turf to make the catch. He hit him in the hands. He didn't hang on to the football though. Third and a yard to go for the Cats on the Georgia 22. They're moving to the left. Wilson quick snap and a quick throw. On third down incomplete. He bounced it in front of the receiver Bowden. Threw it a little bit behind him and the pass was short as well. And now it's fourth and one for Kentucky to continue to play offensive football here with a minute 36 to go and down 17. Well, we'd love just to see this one end right now. Comfortable lead for Georgia, but the kind of season that Kentucky's had, miracles can happen. No, no. No, come on, man. All right, here's the Cats with the ball. They fumble the ball. Rose had it. I think they were trying to run a jet sweep or an end around this way. He fumbled the football. Tyler Clark has recovered it, and that should be the ball game. Ledbetter strips Rose of the football, and the Cats' miracle season may be coming to a close, at least as far as the division title is concerned, with 90 seconds to go. The Dogs take over after the turnover, but it was fourth down. They weren't getting the yardage necessary anyway. It's the Dogs' ball on their own 26-yard line with 90 seconds to go. Georgia takes over on the turnover. 34-17 is the lead, and here comes the offense back out onto the field. Yeah, great penetration right there by Ledbetter are popping that football out but as you mentioned a host of dogs around him regardless wouldn't have mattered looking at the replay mel tucker and kirby smart embracing after that last play they know this one is sealed up dogs from the 26 yard line from will give it to swift swift bounces out left Dogs still plugging away across the 30. Mike Edwards with the tackle. Swift over 150 yards today. Career high for the sophomore from Philadelphia. Back-to-back -back career highs in Jacksonville and now here in Lexington. Swift will exit the ball game and will bring in some substitutions. Prather Hudson will come into the ball game. And, uh, well, this will be the victory formation. Less than a minute to go. The Dogs will begin to take a knee and let that clock tick down to zero. J.J. Holloman about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage just in case something funky happens. Fromm will take the snap and take a knee and the countdown will continue. 40 seconds to go. Georgia will snap it one more time, I believe. Yep, there's about three seconds difference between the play clock and the game clock. They'll take one more snap and the dogs will take the SEC Eastern Division Championship south to Athens for the second year in a row. There's Fromm taking the snap and taking a knee. And the Dogs have won another division crown. Georgia will play in Atlanta on SEC Championship Saturday in a few weeks against the Western Division winner of tonight's ball game between Alabama and LSU. But the Dogs, for the second year in a row, Z, will head back to the SEC title game. Yeah, I did it with a punishing ground game today. 331 yards on the ground against a Kentucky defense that has just owned opposing offenses this year in that area. Coming into this football game, only giving up 107 yards per game. But the Dogs dominating it from the opening whistle on the ground and have really, in the past couple of weeks, regained the identity of playing physical football on the offensive side, running the ball. Two 100-yard rushers today by Georgia for the first time since Chubb and Michelle did it in the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma. And also, oddly enough, the most yards rushing for Georgia since the Dogs ran for 381 yards against Kentucky last year. Today, they dominate on the ground and at the line of scrimmage despite multiple injuries. 331 yards running the football for the Dogs against one of the best defenses in the entire nation. And Georgia Georgia comes away with a 34-17 win over the Kentucky Wildcats. Dogs are SEC Eastern Division champs. They'll celebrate with the fans that made the trip north to Lexington.
Again, 34-17 is our final. Stay tuned for our postgame coverage from Commonwealth Stadium after a Georgia Bulldogs victory. It's all coming up next here on the Bulldogs Sports Network.